Welcome to Roast Mortem. My name is Tom. I'm a Travis. I am your Cody for this evening. And I'm Mike. Oh, it's so good to hear from all of you. Mike, is that half a beat every time on purpose? Because you're the only one that does it. What? Exactly. Okay. That's <laughs> I just said, and I'm Mike. Yeah, I know. Just the way you say it. It's never just like, oh, I, and I'm Mike. It's, and I'm Mike. Yeah. The intros go one, two, three, four. Every episode. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's just starting up. Your computer has that uh, boot mode, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, we want me to do it over again? No, no. I, you're just Mike, Mikey Blue Screen is all. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, your, it's, it's your like handle. It's, it's your style as, as of this point right now. Mikey yeah. Buffer Pause. What's going on? Is my Shaolin style? Yeah, how is everyone's yeah. buff weeks? Do you guys get more buff this week? No. Nope. Um, Amazing. I, I'd hope so. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you asked, Travis, because I'm actually on a diet. Uh, I'm healthing up. I'm I'm doing no Gross. no cheese, no red meat. Uh, oh my god! I'm only drinking on the weekends now, like a like a like some kind of guy with a mortgage. Uh, are you cheesing on the weekends at least? No, I'm not. It, I'm done. I'm done. You? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm shredding. You, 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 I'm working out. So yes, I am having a buff week. Thank you, because I am shredding myself. Uh, I am going to be a washboard of a man. People will be able to look in awe at this yeah, right. person that they already awe at. So it's oh, wow. um, wait, what are Might you doing? Are you eating vegan cheese or something? No, I'm eating chicken and like you know rice out of beans every now and then. You know, like oh, yeah. the time. You know, like maybe every Sounds now and good. then I'll just <laughs> go to the bathroom, throw it up. You know, just get real fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. I think fine. it's irresponsible that chickens don't have udders. That is sad. Well, it's irresponsible, <laughs> Tom. As as a species, they should wake the fuck up. Give yeah, me some right. chicken milk. <laughs> Ew! No, never stop. I guess that I, I know this is a podcast, and it's kind of hard for everyone to to imagine this. But I'm looking at Travis, and he is surrounded by some of the most beautiful breasts <laughs> I have ever seen. Yeah, uh, his background is just a, a stunning example of uh, yeah. what a what a a real mattress should look like. Oh, Tra Travis found the replace background function. Yeah, this guy. Dude, I'm jealous. What the hell, dude? That is not a replace background, Cody. This is my. I'm. Um, this is what's happening in my life right now. <laughs> if that's true, <laughs> you are a tiny, tiny man. Well, surrounded you know what? by like Amazonian women, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you know what? Snoop Dogg did Girls Gone Wild. This is Travis Gone Under Tits. And we know that you and Snoop Dogg are pretty much <laughs> just as well known. So, yeah. 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 It's Travis is the white Snoop Dogg. We both are really tight with Martha Stewart, you know? I love when she comes over and cooks me a meal. Right. Uh, Cody, but... did you make any Martha Stewart meals this week? Hot pot? No. Just <laughs> hot pockets and pop tarts, the Cody diet. <laughs> that'll that'll get me ash oh, uh washboard somethings just not abs i don't know i don't know which part of my anatomy is going to change it'll be gout perhaps uh gout. <laughs> gout, washboard gout gout's flares. making a comeback yep. gout is sexy right mm. yeah well that's actually I my... why i did it though by the way just to let you know i started feeling a pain in my foot and i was like well mm. i have to i have to address this and i don't go to doctors so i no. have to pretend that i have high cholesterol and that i have gout and that I have AIDS, and do all the things I oh, can with what? my diet to uh, prevent that from getting any worse. Well, you also got to tell the doctor, hey, doc, I got ED. And then I'll give you some good pills. <laughs> I am so excited for next week's episode, by the way, because of that. But <laughs> well, I, have to, I have to put a lid on that. That that'd be an interesting like fucking bonus episode if we all take like Viagra before we start and see how distracted we are throughout guys, the entire do episode. <laughs> no, nah, Mike. I knew do I. That'd be interesting if it like turns into a podcasting trick and like Joe Rogan starts doing it too. Like, hey, did you hear about these guys at Russ Morton? Their <laughs> podcasting game got uh, eight times better when they popped Viagra before every. Yeah, show. maybe. Yeah, he slings that alpha male shit that I definitely uh, bought at once and it didn't do anything just made your torso redder like alex jones well i don't know about oh, redder. what was it called uh like that uh male testosterone right male vitality male vitality you're speaking yeah. of that yeah. uh it doesn't matter lizards it's good yeah his car got smashed lizards. the fuck up cody how you doing <laughs> uh good 
I was walking my dog. Well, before I start with this story, have you, do you know like that one person in your life that that substitutes a cute word for like a harsh word and it makes it even worse? Like I, I was walking my dog the other day and like neighbor lady like finds me and my dog's just taking a shit on the grass. My neighbor lady runs up and is like, oh, is your puppy making a boom boom? And I'm just That's like, no, cringy. ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. No, my dog is taking a shit right now. I'll ask you to <laughs> watch your tongue. Oh, and, does that bother like, you? It does, because my dog taking a boom boom is more disturbing than my dog taking a goofy shit. Yeah. A hard goofy shit. Yeah, no, that's I like she was pe- hitting on you. No, she's not hitting on me. She's remarking at the excrement falling out of my dog's ass. Dude, I mean, that's like when people say hiney. The, be- the hairs on the back of my dick go down. Yeah. Really? I hate the word hiney. It's ass. terrible. Save I a syllable. Your hiney, Travis. It's an ass. It's an ass. Oh, a butt. Let me pinch your hiney. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> I do hate that as well, Cody. Yeah. Most cute words are phonetically disgusting. Yeah. Like, oh, look at my hoo ha. It's just like, that's your, that's your uh, that- fucking puss. Oh, man. Yeah. I guess that's like boss. If someone says like boss to me, I fucking hate that. But now I, I say it like a joke now, but like, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, All it's right, just a New York thing. Someone calls you boss. Yeah, boss. <laughs> boss or chief. Or chief. chief. How, how's chief. it going? Chief. Yeah. Yeah. Chief. But, uh, but now I say it because I was using it like as like a as a joking way, but now I, I like find myself trapped into saying it. That makes any sense. Oh, that All totally right, makes sense. Like, Dude, that happened to me one time when I was yeah. making fun of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I love making fun of the Red Hot Chili Peppers more than anything. <laughs> yeah, you do. And, <laughs> and I started listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and all of a sudden I was like, I like this song. <laughs> so I, I get where you're coming from. It's a very dangerous place to tread. You know, if you're going to hate something, mm, yeah, you sure. can't spend too much time doing it. <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll end up loving it. <laughs> yeah. Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> yeah, that's like all those, that's like all those anti-gay Republicans in the Senate. What they do in their yeah. closets different. Yeah, yeah. They're like, they, they they choke on dick while saying being gay is wrong. Yeah, yeah right. Isn't that strange? <laughs> all right, all right, Chief. How you doing, Chief? Over there, boss. All right. Chief, boss. I'm good, Chief. Guys, I just realized something. We have been recording for some time, and oh, no one minutes. cares about the things we've been saying. So why don't oh. we start the episode? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's been sure. a while. Ah. It's been a while. Cody, uh, who is it? You want to just do it? Now? Yeah, let's just do it. We don't, we don't care about Mike? Or uh, Cody, you sent me. What, what, what? I'm chopping over here. Whatever. Uh, Cody, guys, do the chopping block. That's right. You know, just uh, walk all over me. It's all right. It's, it's cool. All right. Quickly, Mike, how was your week? Four words apiece. Go. It was nice. A great time. Still here. Mm. Blew, blew your budget. It wasn't Travis. quite a haiku either. Sick, brah. That's Added great. extra syllables in there, yesterday. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> felt, I feel really skinny now. He's over. He's way <laughs> well, over. Well, that's Mike you. Is skinny. Uh, it's Tom and Mike throwing up both this week. Oh, Travis, hold on. You're in the middle of Portland right now, correct? Yeah. So you're on lockdown, dude. People burn shit. Uh, I. You know the most, the saddest thing that I saw because I walked down there. You know, protesting, cool, whatever. There's a lot of destruction going on. That's cool, whatever. But they have these little <laughs> statue. They have these little statue seals. They have these little statue seals in Pioneer yeah. Square, and one of them wrote "fuck the cops" on the seal. And I know a seal. All seals obey the law because they're dogs that swim underwater. And if you know anything about dogs, dogs obey the laws except for when they eat their own poop. So. Why would you spray paint "fuck the cops" on a seal? I don't know. I think that's very short-sighted. That's not nice. Watch it. Maybe you stumbled down upon there. like an art installation, Travis. No, I'm just saying that, like, you know what? Like, go ahead, smash up fucking uh, Chase Target. Bank. But leave the seal statue alone. Yeah, what the seals do? It's fucked up. Travis, think about seafood again. <laughs> that's not seafood. I would never wow. eat a seal. That's would you eat your dog? Seafood. Would you eat Dahlia? No, I'm not going to eat my underwater pooch that enjoys my quality there of life. Goes. There it goes. Co- co- you're pissing off Cody using words like pooch again. <laughs> that's Bastard. not a cute word. Pooch. Yeah. That's Heine. a pucheroo. Travis, let me blow well, your hiney. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> look, we got some heinies, we got some painted pooches. Mike, you threw up, you look sexy. I've been throwing up, I'm looking sexy. Ass. This is what's going on. We got Dang. sexy Long Islanders and a bunch of weird <laughs> Westerners. All right, hey. let's, let's make a goddamn episode happen like it's yeah. magic hour. Uh, only if you really want to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing the big man. We're doing, we're doing the big man today. You know him, you love him. You, you, you saw his name in the episode title. It's Gandhi. Look at that. Oh. Wow. Freaking out. Oh, he wasn't really a what, big man, Gandhi. though, right? Wasn't he a tiny little man? Uh, yeah, he was You say was big man, but he's a small man in a big man's history ego. Good. Words work. Yeah. yeah he, was, he wasn't a large boy. He was, uh, he, had, he had great gravitas behind his name and actions. I just want to know it, how big everyone how is. He was man sized, Travis. Okay. Indian man sized. Indian man sized. Very skinny. The kind of guy, if you like, very if, skinny. If, if you whipped away his toga or whatever the hell he's wearing uh, too fast, he just a falls doti. apart. He was like a bunch of sticks. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty much just a walking Jenga tower that you kind of want to just yield to all the time. <laughs> oh, he's like one of those skeletons in Super Mario Brothers where you hit him and they fall over and then they get back Dry up bones. a little later. Yeah, something Dry like bones. that. Where it's just, yeah, all right, cool. He's bones. Uh, not, so he's, tell me about Gundy. Gandhi, uh, <laughs> quick pop quiz. What's his first name? Yeah. Mahatma. Oh, oh, Muhammad. No, dude. Ah, uh, damn it. Uh, everyone's wrong. <laughs> Is it Chris? Uh, no, it's uh, it's not Mahatma, uh, which most people think. That's actually just um a, a honorary prefix. Uh, Mahatma means like great soul or O venerated one. Oh, gee. So that's like that's like Father Amort. Like it's the thing you put in front of the holy man's uh, name. Gotcha. So his so real his, like his first name is Mohindas. Is his real first name? So Mahatma Mohindas Gandhis. Uh, Mohat uh, Mahatma Mohindas Karamchand Gandhi, and uh, Gandhi translates to pharmacist. So he's a great souled pharmacist. If you want to literally translate Mahatma Gandhi. I used to know a pharmacist that would hand out pills behind the Burger King. Oh, yeah, I know Should that Should I just guy. call him Gandhi? Call him Gandhi. <laughs> you mean that, yeah. guy, right? that guy with the strange foot? Yeah, yeah, yeah the guy with the strange foot. You know how he got he those kinda had foot. He kind of had dreads, but I think it was just burnt hair. I'm not even sure if that was hair, Travis, but I know what you mean. Um, yeah. Mm. It, it was definitely like a burnt bag or something, but that yeah, that guy, <laughs> yeah. Had, he had great drugs. <laughs> Pills. Pills. Like Rhino 69, pharmacist. Right? Mike, he had everything. He had Rhino 420. <laughs> yeah. He had on a, it. upside down cocaine, which is where you have to go upside down and sniff it off the bottom of a table. It's been glued to some gum. Wow. Ooh. Yo, you got that Superman bubble gum? Oh my God. <laughs> he had a um, Smirnoff in a Capri Sun for you that he would put in there <laughs> himself so you could bring it uh, and drink it in front of your parents him. when you're 16. Dude, I love yeah. pharmacy. Yeah, so oh. shout out to that guy. <laughs> oh, damn. Right. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. I might have misannounced his name earlier because it wasn't in front of me, but it is now. That's his name. And the way I like to describe him is he's just a fucking bucket of weird. I, I thought I knew a little bit about his weirdness. Is just the reservoir tip of the iceberg that was Gandhi. <laughs> so he's not just a cum bucket. He's like a cum bucket with like rainbow sprinkles on top because that's weird. A regular cum he bucket was... where you store cum, not weird. Well, with sprinkles on top, weird. Wow. Sure. I'm not. I'm not going to fight Travis on that one. Does anyone want to? No. I got none. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right so let's just talk about when he was born. <laughs> yeah. Let's take birth. <laughs> All right, great analogy. October. I feel he was born old. <laughs> yeah, he, he fell out of his mom that old, like all like Benjamin scraggly Button and shit. shit. Yeah. October second, eighteen sixty nine. Nice, nice. Born and Good raised year. in it. Excellent year. Born and raised in a Hindu family in coastal Gujarat, Western India. As a child, one of his favorite pastimes was twisting dogs' ears. So, already from a very uh. early age, he's a piece of <laughs> yeah. shit. Wait, would that, that be in his, like, in his, like, MySpace bio? Like, it's his ah, sister saying, oh, yeah, like, I love twisting, twisting dog, ear. dog ears. Yeah, his sister said this, so oh. it's just like, well, it, yeah, like, he, he liked to fucking find, like, stray dogs and twist their ears like a fucking psychopath. All right, man. Like, if that's how we're starting life off, 
It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And, and at some point, he must have pissed his sister off because she didn't, like, go to bat and save him. Like, when, like, a biographer, like, what do you remember about Gandhi's childhood? She was like, oh, he fucked up dogs. Yeah. His first words were, where's my cane? <laughs> <laughs> where's my cane? Where are uh, those dogs? Gandhi grew up in a somewhat wealthy upper middle class. Uh, he wanted, as a child, to become a doctor, but his father said that was beneath the family. Oh. So, little kind of up there as far as riches. Like, you know, when your son's trying to be a doctor, it's just like, no, that's underneath us. Gandhi's like, so. Daddykins, Daddykins, can I have a BMW? No, boy, that is a jalopy. We get Rolls Royces around yes. here. <laughs> 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 and... Back then, they also had the caste system. So once you're in, you're good. Yeah, well, Golden. Yeah. You, you can get kicked out of the caste system, which happened kick to Gandhi. It out, though. It's very hard to get kicked out. You got to really want it to get kicked out. You got to want. Yes, that. yes, you do. You got to. You got to break some fucking rules to get booted. But let's from say the caste you want to get kicked out of the lower cl- caste into an upper caste. That's damn near impossible. <laughs> being kicked out if you're climbing the ladder? That's being pushed up the caste system. Imagine yeah, I love your whole neighborhood just chasing you out because you happen to make a really good deal on pears that brought you a lot of customers. Yeah. <laughs> Gandhi was very shy as a child. He refused to play sports with the other kids, and he was kind of a C C plus student in uh, his schooling. So uh, mm. not the yeah, kind of brightest dumb. cookie in the knife drawer. In May 1883, with very little advance notice, the 13-year-old Gandhi was married to 14-year-old Katsurabai Makahinja <laughs> Kapadia. Keep going, Cody. I tried my best. Hey, older woman. There's probably about 30 you more know? syllables in that name. I know you shortened it. No. <laughs> That's a nickname. If I was going to short it, Katsurabai Kapadia. I tried. I fucking tried. So, very little notice. He's like, hey, you're marrying a woman who's one year older than you. And as a 13-year-old, he was just like, ah, uh, cool. So he's 13. He hasn't been laid yet. I mean, it's got to be cool to get married at 13 when you haven't been laid. But, mm-hmm. like, when you're 17 and you're working on it, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's just like, nah, dude, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of like the game being like, you die, you're fucking up too much. We put you on easy mode. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you're playing, like, Dark Souls, and it's just, like, easy mode now available. It's like, fuck this! Let me finish! <laughs> yeah. Uh, the recent Mario Karts, if you don't yeah, have the Nintendo's settings right, bad. and it has that auto-steer shit, you don't, like, you don't, they, they just put it on for you sometimes? You're like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. why am I, like, I could have <laughs> swore I was fucking up just there. <laughs> why am I not fucking up? Oh, I'm married, that's why. I'm just picturing uh, a 13-year-old Gandhi coming down the stairs, and he's like, uh, honey, I gotta go to work. <laughs> Where are them eggs? Where are them broccoli I eat for breakfast every morning? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just got broccoli give me some breakfast. paper. I need to eat Indian Times right now. <laughs> I feel like this is going to uh, be our most racist episode to date, and for that, I want to say thank well, you, listeners. It's fine because Gandhi was a racist prick himself. And we're not going to outdo Gandhi in racism this episode. Believe you me. He's, he's up there. And, and he's, a, he's a world uh, peace leader. So yeah. if he's allowed to be racist, really? we could be a little racist. Just a little bit. Okay. We're not going to cross his line no, because no. his line is, whoa, way up there. No, no. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay. Uh, uh, Gandhi's brother and cousin were also very suddenly married to their wives on the same day at the same ceremony. Bogo. So like... Their family, yeah, <laughs> buy one, get two. You know what I mean? Their family <laughs> right. was just like, we're going to have a ceremony and marry like three of our fucking like tykes to uh, their wives. Weddings are expensive. So, I, I guess that's the mentality. And it's just like, oh, we all have everyone together now. So let's 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 bang out three weddings in a day. Go let's do it. Yeah. Why so, not? You save on rice. Save on the <laughs> Do you know how, like, when you go to a really trashy wedding, they have, like, a chocolate fountain or something? Oh, the fondue. Oh, the uh, yeah, the fondue vomit. machines, right? Mm-hmm. Like, do they, in India, do they have, like, the mango lassi uh, fountain? Oh, the curry, they have a curry fall. Yeah, curry Ooh, fall. I'd that like that, actually. really good. No, no you, I'd like that. You guys know mango lassi, right? It's, uh, like, the smoothie yogurt drink. Yeah, yeah, it's good shit. Oh, yeah, I my God, I could, I could bathe in that and drink my way out. Of it. I want to fill a big, a big gulp container with that yeah. shit. Yeah. That sounds really good. 
You guys are little girls. What is this? A sweet drink? It's oh, a yeah. yogurt. Yeah, it's a yogurt milkshake. All right. With mango. It's good. Dude, you're on a health kick. It's got yogurt in it. Don't, don't worry about it. Tom, Tom you ask. have to. Tom, as your nutritionist, you have to drink a mango lassie. Oh. Can't eat meat. Can't eat a roast He's beef sandwich. He's the nutritionist now. <laughs> he was just telling you to get pills from the guy behind the dumpster. Let me ask my like... pack and a half a day nutritionist <laughs> what he thinks of my new diet. And if yeah. I should, and if I should put more yogurt in my Indian <laughs> shakes, <laughs> I I don't know what could go wrong, Dad. As your uh. as your nutritionist, I highly suggest you eat the yogurt and because you can't eat cheese. All right, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Go. That's what I'm doing tomorrow. No. That's my diet. Uh, right. What is this called? Uh. Fucking a mango lasso? What the fuck? Like, yeah. So, yeah, a rope of mango. You got it. <laughs> Come here, Cal. I'm going to praise you. <laughs> like I should. Uh, age 16, Gandhi's father fell gravely ill. And Gandhi was said to nearly constantly be at his dying father's bedside. Just like, I'm here for you, Pops. It's going to be okay. That's and nice he, of him. He, he prided himself on being there for his dad in his dad's darkest and final hours. However, he was not there the night his dad actually kicked the bucket as he was off shagging his teenage wife like the the, 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 the two hour that? yeah the two hour break he took to go baby make is when his dad fucking like gave up the ghost and wow. he was really bummed about that nine months later like he was actually literally baby making nine months later the kid is born but dies after one day and Gandhi thinks that's his fault because he made the baby while his dad was dying like like fucking negative karma shit, and you catch my Whoa. drift. Yeah, he should feel you know, embarrassed. Like, yeah, that's pretty bad. So it's yeah, like, maybe like the universe or the ghost of my dad made my baby come out weird, and that's my fault because I was having sex with my seventeen-year-old wife when my dad needed me. Well, I mean, he is probably just like the dad's like he was sixteen, right? The dad's yeah. like Gandhi, yeah. Gandhi. I have something important to tell you, and Gandhi's like. Oh, what's that, Dad? Oh, I got a text message from my wife. Oh, you see yeah. those things there? Oh my God, what's that, Dad? I'll be back later. Hang in there, Chief. Yeah, if I was <laughs> if I was sixteen and married, there wouldn't be a time that you could find me not, let's say, destroying something, um, <laughs> a moment, uh -huh. a moment in time, with my penis by accident. <laughs> uh, mm. Sorry, Dad. I was just doing what my body was telling me to do. See you on the other side. <laughs> Tom, did you so, stop eating red meat for this episode? Sorry, I'm still on this. <laughs> no, I just, I'm, I'm trying, I'm making sure I don't have gout. Cows are sacred, gouts. Gouts are also sacred. Dude, I like red meat. No, I, lo I love that shit. I'm just going to eat it later. That's all, right. all. I'm not quitting anything. I'm just like chilling a bit. I'm also not smoking, so I'm very irritable. All right. Ask him more about his diet throughout the episode, Travis. Yes. Okay. So Gandhi thought this was negative karma, and this is like what sets up his like quote unquote cel celibacy movement move move to celibacy later on in his life. You didn't give up fucking, did you, Tom? Dude, that's not for anyone here to know. But if 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 we must, <laughs> um, I'm not a virgin. There you go. As your nutritionist so, and health yes. expert, I approve this message. Thank you. <laughs> Good to hear. All right. Yeah. So, Gandhi's older brother had studied law and recommended a similar career path for your boy Gandhi. He recommended studies in London. So, ooh, hoity-toity Western uh, schooling for Gandhi is being recommended on the table. Gandhi's mother wasn't really feeling it. So, to convince her, Gandhi vowed to his mother... He would lay off alcohol, meat, and Western poon while spending his time in London. So it's just like, no, no, no good things for me in London. So upon making that promise, that persuaded his mom, and she's like, all right, you have my blessing, go be a lawyer in London. Why do you fucking always eat, Travis? I'm eating a cherry. I'm show. on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to my mommy nutritionist dearest. is on a diet, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay, great. <laughs> so, oh, I <laughs> Speaking of nutritionists, he's laying off the alcohol, meat, and Western poon. That sways his mother. However, the religious elders in Gandhi's life were a trickier sell to let him go to fucking London. When he told 
the religious elders. He's Hindu, of course, by the way. Yes. When they told these uh, Hindu holy man what he was doing, they were just like, yeah, whoa, slow your roll, buddy. Uh, you go to London and learn their schooling and be in their culture, you're going to get you're going to get uh, that old case of Western corruption on you. <laughs> Dude. And that doesn't wash off too easily. So you, you're not allowed to go to be a lawyer in London now. Once you realize that ketchup is a lie and malt vinegar on your french fries is where it's at, you can never go back. It's a higher plane of uh, existence. Oh, man, I want some french fries right now. <laughs> Travis, all right, I'll just say maybe you have a point, maybe you don't, doesn't matter. As your as your nutritionist, but you just you. implied that he would be going from America <laughs> to Britain. I don't know. Are they as opposed to on a, French a further <laughs> east place, the Britain. <laughs> All right, geographically, that did not make any sense. That the second not. you stop putting chutney and goat cheese on your <laughs> French fries and start putting malt vinegar on it, you're never going back. That makes okay, more fine. sense. That, that makes a lot of oh. sense. Thanks for clearing that up. I was a little confused. I'll fucking allow this. <laughs> I'll try it but next time. While we're on the topic, this episode is way fucking deep into politics and racial identity being based on religion, territories lived in and all that. So it's going to get fucking weird. And Travis is there just, you know, lubing up the hole and bracing us for like the, the, the convoluted lines that are about to be drawn. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you not going You're dry, Travis. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. So uh, the Hindu elders are like, no, Gandhi, you stay here. And Gandhi was like, uh, how about uh, fuck yourself? I'm going to London anyway. And this is where Gandhi gets his excommunication from his cast. No. Nice. Nice. The elders were like, don't go to London. He's like, yeah, 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 they got cool stuff over there. Bye. And he leaves and he's in this class called the Untouchables now, which is kind of weird uh -oh. because in Western, in Western society, if you think of a class as untouchable, it's the top of the pyramid. But the Untouchables in the Hindu cast are like, not even on the pyramid. They're like the the sub basement. Like, mm. yeah. not allowed. They're not allowed to like drink out of the same wells. They got to go find a stream to like drink out of. It's right. not good. Well, if you want to, no like, really to get out of it. Yeah. If, Mondi if you want to compare it to America, it's like the Expendables are at the top. These are the top performing men in America and uh -huh. the world. So, so he gets excommunicated, and Gandhi's like, "What? It doesn't matter. I'm." I'm going to fucking America, America. I'm going to fucking London. They don't have caste Murph. system there. Peace. Hold, hold so. on. I, I'm sorry. Just to backtrack one second. Totally right about the implication of the term untouchables. A piece of shit on a sidewalk is technically untouchable. So it does yeah. make sense. That's you know, you don't why want, you don't that, that's, that's that used shit. in India. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's used in India. Because you, you like. Because I do. Want, yeah. because, I want to touch Jason Statham's head. I want to touch that man. I want to shake hands with Stil <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. I want to yeah. share a cigar, Lady in the Tramp style. I don't know how that's possible with Arnold. Yeah, the Expendables <laughs> at the top here. Right, they're the Untouchables here, but it's the other way. It's just flipped upside down. Yeah, it's okay. Weird. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to throw that. No, in it's there. good. Tom, you're yeah, coming you at know. this episode with Western biases. Stand back. <laughs> you know what? Oh. <laughs> 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 So, 1888, your boy Gandhi starts living it up in London. He's doing, he's hitting up posh vegetarian restaurants, enjoying Western uh, tailored suits. And uh, he even, he's even like taking some dance lessons. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah, Mike, you want to you see fucking a picture of Gandhi being all fucking stylish and shit? Oh, fuck yeah. I, I thought you said there was going to be a picture of him dancing. Well, you can imagine, like, he just danced and he's striking a pose after, like, the crowd is fucking, like, ro like, roariously uh, applauding. Dude, that guy's a... That guy's awesome. Look how dapper that oh, motherfucker wow. is. That's Gandhi. He looks like the sixth Beatle. Right? <laughs> he does look very handsome. His suit is way too big for him, though. Yes, yes. it is. Yes, that's, <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. But he's, he's a skinny boy. And most people think of Gandhi as like the popper image, uh, the popper. I thought he was being bald. No, the dude uh, wasn't born Until later on, as right? you suggested. Yeah, it's yeah. later on. Yeah, Mike. Before when I said his first words were "Give me my cane," that was a joke. Oh, uh, he he actually he, was he, born. He was actually born at age zero. Yes, he is <laughs> spotting the cane at this point, not his humble walking pimp cane like, splinter. It's a silver-tipped pimp cane at this point. Oh, fuck what? yeah. So our boy Gandhi, who's Pretty like known baller. to be like a poor guy, you know, rocking the poor lifestyle, 
was actually, you know, big pimpin' in London before he made that life change. It's so, fantastic. Kind of Sheesh. cool. Uh, so he's studying law. Gandhi, at age 22, was called to the bar. He passed his bar exam in London. 22? Yay, for him. 22. Wow. Yep. Uh, that happened in 91, 1891. Uh, he's like, I got my degree. Yay, mission accomplished. Let's go back to India now. I'll be a fucking big shot lawyer, even though I was just excommunicated to dog shit. So he goes and he tries to set up his own practice in Bombay. And it's just like, oh, I miss Bombay. Don't you? It sounds cooler. Yeah, what is it now? Mumbai, I think. Mumbai, Bombay. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm it's sure like that a- the uh, mango slinkies you guys like so much are the same. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I th- was, nothing, nothing against India. I mean, I know this is gonna sound weird. I've always, I've wanted to go to India for the culture, like and and to see these buildings, but they have a problem with people pooping outside. Yeah, yeah, Travis. Well, I think you're just very insensitive, That's, and that and that weird that you were talking about could actually be narrowed down to. <laughs> You're racist. <laughs> no, they have fucking campaigns. It's like you should poop in the toilet, not in the bush next to your house. Because yeah. like they have a toilet and they're not used to using a toilet. You don't appreciate poop. Racist. I mean, I love pooping outside. I you mean, don't like that. Wrong. You're not of nature. You know? You're not excited by the adventure. By the humans, uh, tic tac toes of the road. Watch your step. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't get the poison b- chocolate surprise of India. Uh, <laughs> you poop in a perfect circle. That's impressive. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's an art craft. And then you just need a nine meter poop to like cross the O's when you win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trav. I mean, like, I get yeah. it. I don't like stepping in poop either. But when you go to India, you have to step in poop, or else you're racist. Yeah. Okay, I got it now. I get it, Tom. You I don't. Saying? I don't. I think I'm cultured now. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> Your foot, the bottom of your foot is un- unfortunately cultured. I, yeah. I do our listeners a great service. That goes to all you too. Tom, I'm glad you're looking out for our viewers. I'm looking out for you as your nutritionist. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So Gandhi tries to establish his own practice in Bombay. Uh, this failed miserably as Gandhi was still shy and couldn't cross-examine suspects and witnesses. Like he was just, he, he, he didn't have the chops to grill potential uh, perpetrators. He's like, hey, did you take the cookie from the cookie jar? And they'd be like, no. And Gandhi would be like, oh, okay. Ah. Uh, <laughs> very soft nice. man. Very soft. Soft, soft mm, but bony, boy. Mike. Imagine if you were eating a Reese's peanut butter cup and you took a bite and there was a bone in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that's weird. Be scarred for life. Know, you ever seen the video of the bugs coming out? Bugs? There was like a video of a Reese's Pieces where there was like they opened it up and the inside was like these like little bugs coming out of it and shit. That's pretty cool. Nasty. Was, was it that in India? Because Travis might no, think I that. Think, no, I was I a produced was by Pixar videos because a bug's life is a video. <laughs> it could be honestly. Remarkable. It could have been like a, from a movie. All right. Remarkable. <laughs> I was on a phone, but Just gotta make sure you debone all your Reese's Pieces and debug them. Yeah. Yeah, make sure. I'll check next time. There you go. No bones, please. Boneless Reese's Pieces yeah, only. Yeah, boneless <laughs> Reese's Pieces. Hold the sauce. So, <laughs> your boy Gandhi was able to do the law- lawyering on paper, just not in practice where it really counts. So he just fucking up and gave up being a lawyer. Or, not lo- not being a lawyer, but giving up be- making his own practice, which is kind of like, oh, I guess that was time and money well spent in fucking London. You, you got excommunicated for this, and you're just like, I can't do it, I'm too shy. Wait, did he partner up with anyone? I think he started working for a firm. But he would do contract work that had him travel, because in 1893, a Muslim merchant named Abdullah uh, contacted Gandhi. Abdullah owned a large uh, shipping business in South Africa, and he had family that needed legal advice. So he's like, hey, uh, can I get you to... Um, you know, give me legal advice and help me with my shipping uh, company uh, operation in South Africa. And the lump salary offered was 105 pounds plus expenses. Oh, that's a, it's a good chunk of money. Oh, a decent that doesn't amount. sound like anything. That sounds like his body weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, 17,000, a little bit more than $17,000 in uh, current day USD. So, yeah, I take the job. But yeah, Abdullah, you're going to be the next UPS. Or you're going to be the UPS before UPS. 
Yeah, what can Brown do for you? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, dude, no. I didn't go that way. <laughs> I didn't say it. Don't, if you're uncomfortable with that, you are you better brace yourself for the roller coaster that's about to unfold. My nutritionist is very uh, racially sensitive. Uh, he lives in Portland. It's all about. Yeah. So it's a crazy world we live in. Let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah. A lot of times people will be like, hey, a banana looks phallic. And to that, I'd say you have to ask the banana what it feels. Wow. Can I get that on a t-shirt? Let's get that on a shirt. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. So I don't know why you're so squeamish before we get to South Africa, Travis, but we're in South Africa now. Oh. So get ready. So there's aliens so. landing and they're going in the concentration camps. Yeah, okay, District Bruns. 9 shit. Bruns. So immediately upon arriving in South Africa, Gandhi faced immediate discrimination because of his skin color and heritage. Uh, just so you know, this is the type of shit going around Africa right now. Here's a lovely public billboard in the chat. Uh, someone want to read that to the ninny, uh, the, the peeps at home? Yes. I will read this. I love the Damn. skull and crossbones, though. Big skull and crossbones, and above it says, Danger! Big exclamation point. Natives, Indians, and colorreds. Which is colors, I would assume. <laughs> yeah, if you enter South these Africa. premises at night, you will be listed as missing. Armed guards shoot on sight. Savage dogs devour the corpse. <laughs> you have been <laughs> wow. warned. This wow. is apartheid. Early, early apartheid. Yeah, they they don't like anyone. Those uh, no. fucking around. Holy yeah. shit! South. Welcome to South Africa, Mike. <sighs> It's a little rough. Damn. There's that campaign, like, it's, yeah, obviously, we're dealing with a lot of racist stuff in this country at the moment, and it's like, well, yes. well, not all white people, you know? It is white people, but it's not all white people. It's not us. It's not, like, you know, normal fucking white people. But over in South Africa, it's all white people. <laughs> yeah. 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 I I know we're, we're going to take shots at South Africa. I know America doesn't have the cleanest past, but we're not fucking South Africa. No, we're not okay? that bad. Nope. We're, we, no. A <laughs> few things that Gandhi found a uh, little off was uh, he was not allowed to sit in a, with European passengers in a stagecoach. He had to, like, get up next to the driver. He was like, oh, I thought I would be able to sit inside the stagecoach. It's like, nope. You ride shotgun up there with the uh, driver. I prefer I prefer shotgun, too. Yeah. He, Go ahead, Travis. He just came from England where they're like, I don't. Whatever. You want to fuck my wife? You're different looking. <laughs> yeah. He's from, he just put in like three wife. years at London. He's thinking he's an honorary Brit. He dresses like a Brit. He talks like a Brit. He speaks perfect English. He, he's doing it up. He thinks he's an honorary Briton and he goes to this British colony and he thinks he's going to be welcomed with like open arms, but his face is browner than a brownie and it's South Africa turn of the century. So it's just like Sorry, you're going to be disappointed as fuck, Gandhi. <laughs> oh. So, uh, he was kicked into a gutter for walking a little too close to a white family's house. Uh, he was thrown off a train bound for, Pretor uh, bound for Pretoria after refusing to leave first class, even though he purchased and held a first class ticket. Wow. So, like, the, the, like someone on the first class was like, hey, you're not allowed in here. And Gandhi's like, uh, I have the fucking ticket and receipt that says I'm allowed to be here. And then, like, the train conductor was just like, oh, no, the racist is right. Get out. All right, boys. Get him off the fucking train, mate. <laughs> yeah. He's fucking upsetting all the children in first class. Uh, With his brownness, no less. I, just kind of sitting there looking all menacing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if uh, we have any South African listeners. And I... I'd, we have less after this yeah, episode. Yeah, well, I'd say uh, I'd apologize. I really don't. I think you have the stupidest English accent. Like out of all the out of all the places that speak English, like oh my god, it just sounds so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even gonna try. That one's dumb. Thanks, Travis. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tom does all of the weird fucking English accents. Just not gonna touch South Don't Africa. Don't even bother. I hope you're proud. It's too I hope you're proud, South it's Africa. It's too Danish. I don't me and Danes. Yeah. What I look like. There you go. Uh, also, Indians were not allowed to walk on sidewalks. Uh, Gandhi was walking on a sidewalk, and a cop just kicked him into the street without warning. Just like, not for you. Get in the street. Mm. He may have also just kicked him because he was really easy to kick. He's very tiny. Yeah. Might have tripped. Yeah. I, oops. I tripped. 
He's like over a gun. He's like an unfunny version of Ant Man starring Paul Rudd, but in blackface or <laughs> brown face, rather. <laughs> Yeah, so, oh, I can't, as I, I love said, that movie. It's best enjoyed on VHS tape, not laserdisc. So as I said, Gandhi's all surprised. He's like, "Ah, you just got you know, I'm an honorary Britain. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm like, why the fuck am I being treated like shit in a British colony? It's just because you were colored with a you in there, sir. A lord. Yeah, it's fucking imperial South Africa. It's what happens there." The white folk of South Africa just simply lumped Gandhi in with the native Africans. And Gandhi took hard, hard fucking exception to this racial generalization. I'm paraphrasing here, but Gandhi was like, You guys are racist pricks. Indians are nothing like those lazy black people. <laughs> <laughs> Doubling down on the racism, oh, Gandhi! Yeah, oh, so... God. It sounds like a Mel Brooks he's bit. <laughs> racially upset but he's fighting the racial inequality with his own racism. Yeah. This is the crux of Gandhi's racial views. The man fought for racial equality, as I said, but he did so in a very, very fucking racist way. He wanted Indians to have racial equality to Brits, a position which he held as superior over Africans. So it's just like, ugh. Like, this is the guy, you know, this is the guy. This is Gandhi. So, like, you're telling me the two people that we learned about with peaceful protest, we got uh, Gandhi and MLK. Mm -hmm. Those guys wouldn't be tight? Well, there's that epic rap battle. You saw that, Travis, with Key and Peele? No. That fucking, Mm. that channel sucks. (laughs) Fuck that channel. I watched it as part of research for this, but uh, 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 MLK quoted Gandhi a lot. Yeah, even though but, Gandhi you know, would have cherry picked. Yeah, even though Gandhi would have been like, uh, "This mm. guy here, uh, Martin Luther, who? Martin Luther, not as cool as me. <laughs> Martin Luther, back of the bus. Come on, I'm a British man. <laughs> That'd be his sentiments. <laughs> oh my god. So Gandhi is this weird brown white supremacist. Yeah. Brown white supremacist. Just, just so everyone just knows, I know that in. going into this episode, that's what it, we're dealing with tonight. Yeah, wrap your yes. head around that one. Yeah, there you go. Wow, in the case of South that. Africa, yeah, there you go, Mike. So in the case of South Africa, this is a case of the pot calling the kettle minority. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're missing the you're missing the point of yes. of any kind of equality talk if you if this is where you're coming from. I, I can't help but laugh. I can't. Yeah, and ice cream. So, and ice cream's an ice cream. What are you getting? Again, it's chocolate ice cream. You get strawberry ice cream. You get vanilla ice cream. It's all ice cream, and all of it goes all over my chest. But a mango lassi, that's something Mango special. lassi is different. That's better than all the rest That's of forever. <laughs> Thank you, nutritionist. That's permanent. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's saying the ice cream goes on his chest, not in his stomach, mm-hmm. so half credit. That's where I'm rubbing it now. Yep. Let's talk about the K-word, or the K-slur that's going around South Africa at this point. I'm going to say it. It's kafir. Big, big old no-no word of the time. I don't like comparing other slurs with the N-word. You know what I mean? But this is literally the N-word for the time. Oh, I'm okay. I'm positive there's a Norwegian black metal band named Kafir. I'm sure they're all Ooh, skinheads. That's rough. Up there. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, yeah, well, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of racist black metal people. Think of Kafir as the N-word of the time and place. It even looks like it went through like a cereal box decoder ring. From the N word because it goes consonant vowel, twin consonant vowel R S. Oh, <laughs> okay, uh, okay, okay. Like it's it's got the, even the same like linguistic pattern to is that N word. Is this a slur that's just in South Africa? Like we weren't saying kafir in the states, right? N- no, okay. no. But spoilers: in 1976, that slur uh, became a criminal offense to publicly say. So you, you can argue like. Really? Oh, slightly might be slightly worse than the actual n-word and you know to all the listeners out there i I know the john mulaney bit if i'm unwilling to say the n-word it's the worst word yeah it's a good bit but work with me here this is at the time fucking kafir's big no-no word painting a picture Yeah. yeah yeah so without further ado here's direct quotes of gandhi slinging this slur around oh yes and no one has the emotional attachment to this word kafir, so we can say it freely. Yeah, well, yeah. Unless if you're in South it, Africa. It, 
In which case, we've already made fun of you and you've turned the podcast off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me with a good time. So, Kafirs are as a rule uncivilized. They are troublesome, very dirty, and live almost like animals. They are intellectually backward. They are unlettered and have no arts. This is Gandhi. And just, if, if you want the extra impact in your mind, just turn kafir into the N-word, and, and there you go. Oh, I'm just saying one thing about this. It's terrible. That's the one thing. Second thing. <laughs> African art is badass. Yeah, it's good. Fucking oh, sick. It's awesome, yeah. It, what are you doing, Gandhi? You can't even, you're a lawyer. What, what are lawyer, lawyers can't make <laughs> art. They make pain. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> More on that peaceful, peaceful Gandhi slinging the K-word around. Ours, direct quote now, ours is a continual struggle against the degradation sought to be inflicted upon us by Europeans who desire to degrade us to the level of raw kafir, whose occupation is hunting and whose sole ambition is to collect a certain number of cattle to buy a wife and then to pass his life in indolence and nakedness. So, this is Gandhi being like, hey, Indians are nothing like black people who just hoard uh, cattle and sleep around naked all day. That's not, that's not Indians, man. Terrible thing, that's a terrible thing to say about people. Are you trying to imply <laughs> yeah. that Mike is racist? He's no. not. He's not. And that's a rude thing for Gandhi to say. Yeah. Of all people. Very rude. Rude. Yeah. yeah it was. You know, first thing, when someone says, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, mm. the last thing they're thinking is rude. <laughs> well, <laughs> here we got, we got a rude, rude guy. Yeah. I, I would have never guessed. There you Think go. Of this dude's like fucking Jesus second coming over here. Well, right? that's how this most is the second feel. time Jesus came, and let me tell you, it was a very racist come. Yeah. Very racist Damn. coming. Yeah, I could see it. Gandhi also said Anglo-Saxons and Indians are sprung from the exact same Aryan stock. So, Gandhi believed there was a brotherhood, an Aryan brotherhood between Indians and well, Europeans. All right, so that was something that like Hitler and his cronies We'll get into okay. him. Okay, all right, we're going to get into it because <laughs> I know from the Fritz Lang episode we touched there was one character in that in that episode where he was an Indian guy living in Nazi Germany and okay, maybe we'll go into it later. Uh, continue. Uh, no, keep going well, he was just he was accepted even though the Nazis were like, you know, fuck everyone. And he was accepted because There's he came from like the same ilk as the yeah. Aryans cuz he was Indian. There's going to be so many weird descriptors and definition and these people are different because they're and so like, this stupid is a, this is a whole fucking racial clusterfuck of an episode i'm sorry i didn't make history this way i'm just <laughs> doing a podcast on it yeah man you're just doing your job it's okay yeah before we move on i want to say usually when an ugly racist skeleton like this like flops out of a quote-unquote uh historical paragon historians like to use like the defense oh that's a biased mistranslation that's imperfectly transcribed. Oh, he was misquoted. No. That, <laughs> that shit doesn't apply to Gandhi. Gandhi wrote and spoke perfect modern English. <laughs> All right? So these are exactly his words in the exact order they were meant to be read. All right. I believe like, it. You, you, you can't use that defense on Gandhi right now because he's a perfect yeah, English Yeah, you can't speaker. be like some guy who's like, I went to an Indian restaurant. I just was trying to find a chicken sandwich, and they're all as gibberish on the menu. Uh, what is Mahatma Gandhi saying? That's quite the stretch there. Um, <laughs> yes, but you're right in a way. You're not wrong. <laughs> Still a stretch. Stretchy wrong. <laughs> Stretchy wrong. Cor correct. Scratched. Work this word out with me. Correct. I like it. Yeah, correct. Scratched. He was correct about it. Oof. There you go. So, fueled by racial inequality, lol, in 1894, Gandhi had unified the Indian people of South Africa into a small political community. The white folks hated this, and they got their torches and pitchforks out and formed a literal mob to chase Gandhi around. Gandhi averted an untimely lynching through a daring escape, in part possible because of the police, the police superintendent's wife. Don't know what that was oh. about. Maybe... Maybe he banged. So he, he escaped a lynching basically because he only weighed 100 pounds. 
Then they he slipped uh, through the noose. Just, like, oops. Yeah, wind yeah, caught him. Where'd he go? On that one. Yeah. Well, someone was carrying him, and they couldn't tell the difference when he jumped off. <laughs> yeah. Wait, does he still have a wife at this point? Is she there with him? Yeah, she's way out of the picture. Okay. She's pretty much being like the obedient Indian wife. I actually missed when she died when I was doing like the biography <laughs> oh. because she's like that far okay. out of the picture. Like I forgot to mention, like they had four kids together, but Gandhi was pretty much swept up into his like activism and paid no mind to his wife. And you kind of gotta like downplay your wife when you're like, uh, like, uh, like touting celibacy. You know what I mean? And, you know, you kind of don't want to. <laughs> right, right. I never fucked, like, but I got celibate. four kids. Yeah. <laughs> Five, yeah, right. the first one didn't go all screwy. Yeah. Uh, the year was 1900. Double odd. Gandhi organized Indian men to enlist as stretcher bearers for the Brits during the Boer War. And if you don't know, the stretcher bearers are like the two guys that like handhold the stretcher and go hop, 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 and take you to like, you know, the doctor when you're sick. Mm hmm. Mm. And those were used because uh, fucking terrain too rocky for uh, ambulances. Uh, yeah, I think we probably could return back for some character in the Boer War, because that was a really stupid <laughs> war. Yeah, I don't know too much, but I'll, I'll believe anything yeah, you I said. Remember anything. Well, yeah, it's the British and, and South Africans fighting uh, against native people in Africa for diamonds or something. Good. <laughs> South America. Mm. South, South Africa. America. South Africa. So Gandhi's doing this because he wants to combat the racial stereotype that Hindu peeps are soft pansies. You know, like, the Brits are like, oh, your religion is all about forgiveness and reincarnation. And but Gandhi is like, ah, us machismo forte Hindus are willing to carry your broken-ass soldiers to the nearest field hospital. And the British, the British are smart. They're not going to refuse free help. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, do it, man. So Gandhi uh, gets a medal, a South African medal, uh, the Queen South Africa medal. Wow. It's literally just called that. <laughs> as his role was for he a, a stretcher though? bearer. He, oh, he was oh, he was one. Oh, the thing is, he's not in your body like fishing out bullets. He's dragging your body to the guy that can fish out the bullets. So like he's oh, on the okay. medical like pit crew, well, but he's not a doctor. Yeah, it's like so uh, the EMS folks who work in ambulances today. They're they're pretty knowledgeable. They know what's up. They can assess the situation. Back then, they barely knew what any situation was, even the doctors at the hospital. So it was just like, just get the guy there. You're medical. Yeah, well, yeah. also, it's like he was a lawyer. And lawyers and doctors both hang out at the country club. So they ba both basically know which poles to stick in people. Bingo. Perfect. Yeah. You yeah, need right. a nine iron for that one. He's got <laughs> eight leads. Inside of his body, nine iron the shit out of it. Yeah, choke up on that boy. Yeah. He'll be fine. Yeah, eventually he'll... Everyone stops bleeding for some reason eventually. Good point. <laughs> yeah. So, 1906 rolls around, and legislation, South African legislation, start uh, requires Indians to register for compulsory South African IDs. Eh, this is the same fuckery as having uh, Jews wear the... Yellow Star in Nazi Germany. So it's just like not uh, a huge fan. Gandhi's not a huge fan of it. I don't think anyone's so, a huge fan of that. No. Yeah. Gandhi advised his cool. uh, Indian following to uh, just ignore the law. And his followers were like, yeah, we'll ignore the law with fucking violence. And Gandhi's like, no, with nonviolence. So it's just say no, ignore the fuckers, don't fight them. Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's do it, less, this bro. Is, do less. Yeah, this is. This is like a no, but peaceful. This is the non-violence, non-violent disobedience shit that's going on. Uh, way less fun, but better for PR. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's what a lawyer would tell you to do. Just say no. Don't, yeah. don't, don't do go. anything. Just say no. Don't comply. Yeah. Say no. You if anyone's like, if anyone's like, did you fuck that sheep? Just say no. Even if you did it, don't worry. Just say no. I'll worry about it later. Don't worry about it. Racist. Just say no. Don't comply. So this is the beginning of, like, the peaceful protest vibe that Indy's thrown out there. And it started in Africa when he's, like, you know, of a, you know, being a lawyer and being an activist and all that good stuff. For this civil disobedience, Gandhi was called semi-barbarous, a parasite, and a yellow man. I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. He's clearly not yellow. Gandhi endured all this South African hate and formed the Natal 
Indian Congress, Natal being the name of the colony in South Africa. Uh, it's a very recognized political force, one of his most higher up there achievements. Um, Gandhi actually spends an extra... Uh, not an extra. Gandhi spends 20 years in South Africa. That's way more than he expected to be there. You know what I mean? He took the All 105 time. pounds for like, you know, a year that contract and ended up staying there for like 19 more years. It's like, woof. Jesus That's crazy. Christ. I had no idea he was in South Africa that long. Oh, Who yeah. He was, he was up in there. He's one so, of the first Nelson Mandela's, but he would have hated Nelson Mandela. <laughs> so fucking weird this episode, man. <laughs> it is very weird. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's weird. So 1950, our boy Gandhi returns to India. So he's like, hey, he's back for the you know second time. And he went from lawyer to political activist. Like he's got enough people like seeing what he's doing. He's like, oh, I'm this macho, like civil disobedience guy. And everyone's vibing to that. So the hot topic. Wait, the time hold on. In hold on, India, Cody. You mentioned macho. So he's macho because like we saw that picture of him in the suit. And it like barely fit him. He looked like a toddler, like wearing the guy like my stuff dad's done clothes. In India. Yeah, but yeah, he's fine. macho. He, I don't know. He's getting stuff done. I guess that's okay. macho. In I didn't that know people way. were like, dude, this is the Rambo of India. Because like, no, he, I've he's seen not some to be Indian dudes, title. and they're fucking like, like, oh, he's scroll. like, he's like macho in the way Johnny Depp is hot. Like, because he's okay. built, he's Shut built like a woman. All right. <laughs> um, he has womanly hot, features, hot woman. but he'll fuck your wife. Yeah, he will fuck your wife. He will do. He will do. So, he will Just drown in pussy before you can even trip in a puddle. Mm -hmm. He's getting it done, and it's okay. not the yeah. the, the effective, average route. effective yeah. macho. You got okay. Gandhi here. He's just signing Brandon the paperwork. Fraser he's, doing, Gandhi. He's, he's making the calls. No, Brendan Fraser is actually macho. All right, leave him out of this. Well, yeah. Don't fucking just talk shit about Brandon <laughs> Fraser. Brian oh, sorry, sorry. is the Marshall Do not Bye. disgrace his name with this podcast. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be racist. Yeah, Mike, so. you should be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Neither did Gandhi. No, he meant to be racist. Um, anyway, hot topic in India at this point is freedom from uh, the British crown. All of India is like, eh, we're kind of not feeling you British pricks anymore. Get the fuck out, please. And the British were like, oh, but you make us a shitload of money, so we want to stay, kind of. Excuse us. We love tea! My boy! Fucking love tea. <laughs> they love tea and they love their colonies. So, the British are being, you know, corporate imperial assholes. Uh, they want the Indians to kind of stop making and gathering their own resources and goods and start buying British goods. You know what I mean? Like, buy our stuff. We'd like it more. You might yeah, not, but we'd like it more. So, most like. The the two hot things were that British fabric and British salt. Uh, the uh, the Brits wanted Indians to buy their salt, not use Indian salt, which is kind of awkward because Indian salt is just on the floor <laughs> at the beaches. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's not you, that you can literally yeah you can literally just go and pick up a chunk of Indian salt like you know off the shallows on a beach. And use it. Well, it's not that like Himalayan shit that's like on a mountain no, good and stuff. you got to carry it down via Sherpa and it's like nice yeah. and they lick it for you first to make sure you're not going to get Pre poisoned. Yeah. I just say in the Himalayas, those are touching India, so maybe. Uh, yeah. Guess what? Joke's on <laughs> you, Britain. Uh, you got that stanky ass Jersey salt. Uh, we got Himalayan pink salt. This shit's pink. Guess mm, what? And also, Sherpa's been licking it. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a telltale sign that the natives trust the product. Yeah. What's up, Jersey? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, as an Indian guy, broke this rule, and instead of buying some good old British salt, picked up some free salt off the fucking floor, you'd get your ass thrown in jail. What? Just because they don't, yeah, they don't want you doing that. They want you buying their stuff, not jail. using the free stuff. Yeah, jail, Mike. Holy shit. Fucking jail. That's like if Walmart sold air. Right? Be like, what are you doing? What the hell are you doing breathing over there? You're supposed to go to Walmart. Go or to jail. Like George W. Bush with the No Child Left Behind Act. You got to <laughs> pay for this child. bullshit education. <laughs> We're going to make the education buy. worse, and you got to do it. We're going to up the taxes on it. You're paying a lot <laughs> more to make sure your kids are extra retarded. <laughs> there you go. But instead of retarded, it's flavor. Mm. Ah. <sighs> In Whatever the same year of 1915, uh, Gandhi asks his fellow Indians to boycott British fabrics. 
And, you know, as to not be a hypocrite, Gandhi himself gave up his, you know, fancy English three-piece suits and adopted uh, the dhoti, a.k.a. that little bathrobe diaper thing he's got going on. That's <laughs> great. The dhoti. Yeah. The dhoti. D-H-O-T-I. The dhoti. And, and, and that, that reminds me of my favorite wearing... facial hair, the goatee. Yes. It's not that, though. <laughs> uh, Gandhi wore the short version of it as to use less fabric. So... When you Google Doty, it looks like MC Hammer Pants. Gandhi's wearing the 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 short short oh, version sick. of it called the short. Are pants? I have a pair right. of pants like that. I don't wear them often because I feel very uncomfortable. There's a reason you don't. Yeah, there's a reason you don't wear them often. Yeah, because my um, my balls sway from leg to leg. It's like a pendulum. Yeah, it's bad. They just hurt you, my body. Those are good when you skate. No, they're not, Maybe. Mike. You're never gonna have kids. I'm sorry. I, just, <laughs> I don't want any. Good. Then you're, yeah. they are good for skating. So his dhoti <laughs> was hand-woven, India cotton, good stuff, none of the British stuff. Uh, his followers would have uh, fabric burning parties, just like, round up all the British cloth, make a bonfire, have a good time. Well, right, because you can't really throw all the British clothes into, like, the bay, because then they just scoop it out. Like, you can ruin and tea. sell it back to you. You can ruin tea by throwing it in salt water. You throw some you clothes burn. in some salt water, they just grab a net. They're like, oh, you're an idiot. Uh, guess what? We'll just dry yeah. this out. <laughs> we'll dry this out and sell it to you for twice the price for being salt washed. Yeah. Yeesh. So, um, uh, Gandhi would have his followers uh, have cotton spinning parties. So, like, they'd have the cotton wheel out and everyone would just spin. Like, they would try to get each Indian to do their civic duty would spend 200 yards of cotton every morning just as an attempt to like break the stronghold of the British textile corporations wow. on India. So like you can see archival footage of just hundreds of Indians just having a good time sitting down. It's almost like a meditative state and each of them is just working on their 200 yards of uh cotton thread. Are you that. saying that Gandhi is responsible for making Nike's and old navy clothing? Don't, yeah, probably not. Kind of sounds like that. He's just like, yo, we wow. don't break away from these people. We got to do this shit for very cheap on our own, and we got to sell it uh, other okay. places. I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, he invented the sweatshop. Oh my god, Tom! Yeah, you can look at it like that if you want. Oh god, what a nice um, man. <laughs> this is where I Gandhi love sneakers. Do you, Mike? Some of your best kickflips were in sneakers. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Tevas. There you go. The sandal Boom. that Sketch Sketchers. Okay. Because I was going to say, you do kickflicks and tevas because like, it's a sandal, but it stays on your foot. This is where Gandhi adopts the vibe of getting through life with as little as you need as far as material possessions and vices and pleasures. Uh, this is called asceticism. So it means just you don't need it as much as you think. So three-piece suits were a no-no. The, the dhoti, a walking stick, and a pair of... Glasses, yeah, you, you can rock those. You need those. Keep it to one or two locally sourced meals a day. Definitely no dessert. And sexy times only for the baby making process. So this, this, cult. this sounds boring. A little bit. <laughs> I would say, this sounds boring. Because first of all, do I want to eat all locally sourced mm -hmm. things? I mean, it tastes fresher, but like sometimes you want Taco Bell. That's not locally sourced. Ooh, uh, yeah. I want some Taco Bell. Right uh, second of all, uh, I like to wear clothes besides sheets, um, and I probably could, I probably could spin a sheet, uh, just turn into a poncho. Yeah, Travis, I, mean, I understand you like wearing clothes that are not sheets, but back then, clothes were basically sheets. I mean, you were looking, we're just looking before at Gandhi dressed up all dapper. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. what did he look like? He looked like a, a he was wearing a suit made of sheets. So it's not that <laughs> much of a, a stretch to go from a different one sheet yeah. to a different type of sheet. I'm just trying to get out of the fact that when people are like, make sure you buy local. I don't know. Sometimes maybe the locals are the ones that are wiping every single strawberry that comes off the farm on their taint. Who knows? It's local. I don't. Hey, that's, that's a debate. I think that's a great point, Travis. Yeah, it's local though. B by it. the by quality, by quality. Yeah, maybe First. it's local. Maybe it comes from a big old, big ass, uh, you know, strawberry plant wherever they do strawberries. Yes. And, and maybe they're putting, maybe they're dumping fucking antibacterial COVID killer best shit on your strawberries. 
as opposed to coughing on them, spitting on them, wiping them on their taint so. and handing them to you. Cody, are you catching all this? Uh, Travis, Remember my, when this episode was about Gandhi? Right. And I, do you believe my <laughs> nutritionist would get this drunk on a fucking mm. podcast? I'm not drunk. Yeah. I'm spitting more facts at you, Tom. Don't buy local just because it's local. Right, Nutrition. You, I won't. I definitely won't. <laughs> All right. I'm never gonna. Like, do what that. are you gonna get local on Long Island anyway? <laughs> I mean, dude. Dirt. Bagels. Uh, uh, yeah, bagels. Yeah, we got it. That's all. not local. It bagels. Is the grain farm that makes the bagels. Yeah, where are you getting that flour from, dog? That's local as it gets. Where are you getting the flour yeah, the from? Basement. What dandruff? Oh my god, we went <laughs> to Half Hollow factory. Hills, it's we local, shook the hair out of factory. everyone. All the kids, we got all the dandruff out, we're making bagels. I got I got a there neighbor go. who grows parsley, just that way. Alright, oh, so you can eat him. parsley salads. Yeah, I'll eat parsley salads. <laughs> That's what, alright, fine, I'm doing better than you. What do they got out it's there? Local, they, got, though. they got They got burnt coffee. Yeah, no, nah, dude, I just ate some, <laughs> I ate out before you making fun of me for eating cherries as your nutritionist who came from fucking a couple counties <laughs> over. And I Is knew that, that right? they weren't sneezing and shitting on them because I smelled them first. Every well, single one. Hold on, Travis. Crazy idea. Let's say I wanted some cherry. So I asked you, Travis, to send me some of those delicious cherries. Would you be okay with that? Yeah. Not buying local. That's not local to me. I don't know. But what's Gandhi doing? He's like, guess what? You want to wear these spandex? I'll make Thank them myself. You. I don't know. This is this is drunkest I've been in a while. It's good. Sick. So let's get back Enjoy. into the episode. Thank you, Travis, for clarifying what local means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to just to cap that thought off I had before we went into that diatribe. I want you to think of asceticism as just next level Amish shit. Gotcha. Okay. Easy stuff. Oh, well, they make local shit. They're like, you want butter? I'll Shut make up, it myself. Travis, I'm gonna come in it. We did, we just did that. They I make know. ovens. All or, right. Like make brick ovens and stuff like that. Onions, good or onions. Fireplaces. Yeah. Barns. Fireplaces. All right, Cody, so, continue. In 1930, Gandhi leads a three week salt march, a 240 mile journey to a beach in Dandi. Through the long journey, Gandhi amassed many a follower, stating he was going to defy the salt monopoly legislation. So he's got hundreds of peeps following him a la Forrest Gump style. Thank you, Tom, for setting that up earlier. Uh, 240 miles, he's just getting people to fall in line behind him like a Forrest Gump, and he's like, I'm going to stick it to the man. But hes I, I can't imagine Gandhi's a spry power walker at any phase of his life. He's just no arch support in his sandals. He's just hes just uh, cruising. He's got Very nothing. Slowly. He's running on E all the time. He's, yeah. he's Gandhi, not gone full. <laughs> oh, Perfect. zing! Send yeah. you right to the moon, Tom, with a zinger! Someone's uh, going to kill the, me very soon. <laughs> <laughs> after the 240-mile hike, Gandhi waddled into a, the beach in full public view, picked up a handful of salt from the shallows, walked back to the shore, and just jokingly auctioned it off to like a group of his followers. He's like, oh, who wants it for two rupees? Da, 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 da. Smart. It's free and then money. Somebody, a somebody actually bought it. Gandhi was immediately arrested because he's dealing in contraband. Oh, my uh, AKA non-British salt. It wasn't like, that oh, it Gandhi. Was it that stupid bitch that walks around with your, her umbrella out all the time? Oh, the, 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 the yellow Morton salt girl? Yeah, she's raincoat. like, what the fuck you doing, bitch? What the fuck did I just see? What Is that I contraband? See? You you that's, have that's, your umbrella out. He, the man's selling tasty sand. <laughs> he's yeah, he's obviously been, like, on the right side of history right it now. It wasn't yeah. a fine. He just grabbed it. It must have been mostly sand. You can't you can't arrest people for selling sand. I've been telling everyone that for years. Well, the British did. The British uh, had no problems arresting that. Tom, they were jerks. Tom, yes. uh, actually, you can if you have any legal. Um, you know the sand art people. Yeah, one layer is actually cocaine. And they sell the sand art, sand art, that you can fish out your cool layer. Uh, Cody, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just lost some of my brain when Travis said that. Because obviously the sand isn't the problem. It's the fucking cocaine. Also, that should be legal. But 
That's why you would be arrested, not necessarily the sand. They're not going, look at all this sand around this cocaine. <laughs> you gotta bring it in. This guy's got too much sand around this cocaine. Tom, don't hit me with technicalities. Uh, Gandhi, lawyer, what are you doing? So, as I said, Gandhi deals a little bit of salty contraband to his fellow Indians and gets arrested by the Brits. The Brits are asshole cucks, and um, he gets... Uh, you guys like salt? For it. <laughs> what? You guys just eat, like, salt straight up? What are you, a no. fucking deer? Like, you ever yeah, eat, like, a bunch of... No, like, eat, like, a bunch of pretzels, and there's, like, all the salt at the bottom of the bag. You ever eat that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I throw that You're part just... out. Yeah, Mike, that's what? garbage. I love that part. I love that. Like, you get the salt at the end, you just, like, suck on it, your fingers. All <laughs> Tom, right, stop Tom, or, uh, <laughs> Mike, Mike, I'm sorry, you, you usually say very charming and fun things, but that was disturbing in a way, because it, you sound like a horse. What do you mean? I love like pretzels. <laughs> you just sound like a horse. <laughs> How high is your blood pressure, dude? Are you fucking- I don't know. Are you I'm trying young. to do kickflips? It doesn't matter yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got three years before it matters. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. You eat as much I'm, salt I'm as you can it right now. <laughs> yeah, right. You eat as I'm much salt as you it. can. You all right, twenty twenty three. You put salt in your milk too. All right, horse boy. <laughs> <That's> yeah. <good. laughs> anyway, found of youth over here. <laughs> found a mic. Fucking anyway. <laughs> so, this civil disobedience falls upon the global stage because it's absolutely absurd that. An Indian man is told by a foreign power to not use the wealth spring that is an Indian resource. Who are the British to say, like, no, you, the Indian people, can't use Indian salt that's just laying around? This is kind of where Gandhi, like, puts it on paper that maybe imperialist Britain ain't the best thing for their country. Wink, wink, hint, hint. So, like, yeah. he's doing it. He's doing it peacefully. He's doing it disobediently. He's being a fucking Gandhi. I mean, isn't this the same yeah. excuse that people are like, I don't know, it's a weed, bro, it grows out in my backyard. Yeah, you can look at it like that, like... Like, I don't know, like this mushroom just grew in my mouth. Because I have a cavity. Oh. It could mm. be. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, yeah. If, if a cop was, like, searching your house, but like, oh, I don't know, this shit just grows in my backyard. Yeah, it grew out and dried out into this bag. It uh, loaded yeah. itself into my <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna smoke it, it just happened. <laughs> Just like how that hamburger fell into Travis's mouth earlier. Yeah, right? just happens. That's just gravity. <laughs> Call the so weed. The British hate. Have you ever arrested a dandelion? No. <laughs> I can imagine Travis just in a chokehold from a cop. <laughs> like you never arrest dandelions, have you, motherfucker? <laughs> uh, any other way? Ugh, fuck it. Anyway, the British hated this. They hated Gandhi. It's just like, how dare you point out how absurd our laws are? And the British just started beating the shit out of Indians protesting, asking for Gandhi to be let go. Wow. And, uh, you know, whole imperialist, like, authority, fuck the man thing. Gandhi was in and out of British jail over four years with a total of seven arrests. So he's just, like, in and out. They may have, they may have like, installed a revolving door just for fucking Gandhi. That's how in and out he was. And in jail, Gandhi would do his Gandhi thing and not eat. He's just like... I hate that I'm in jail. I'm not having your sandwiches. He would just, you know, he'd do his hunger strikes in jail to, like, kind of stick it to the British man. Do you think that he just didn't eat in general? And then the the fat English tard who couldn't stand skipping butter breaks was like, <laughs> this guy isn't eating. I think he's got a yeah. statement. Oi, 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 uh, here's a button roll, a uh, sausage roll, and my seven sausage roll today, and Martha's gonna make me a steak and kidney ham pie, uh, just proper, and then for dessert we'll have steak and kidney pie. Oh, that's good, officer. Uh, I got one thing, we got this guy, Gandhi, right? He's down there, uh, down there, and uh, you just told me about your sausage roll, just remind me, he says that he hadn't eaten his sausage roll. <laughs> Maybe it's political. <laughs> Maybe he's got something up his sleeve. Maybe he's, he's got something up his bed sheet. Yeah, he skipped his last six crumpet breaks. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, throughout his life, he does over a dozen of these hunger strikes, the most car, hardcore of which lasting three weeks. So wow. imagine 21 days. As a hungry motherfucker. He's, he's a hungry motherfucker. He's skinny. He's a bag of bones. Um... Just as a quick reminder, he did like these, me hungry. 
They, well, he's hungrier than you, Mike. I feel like he's hungrier than you'll ever be throughout your entire life. Yeah, probably. Unless you die of starvation <laughs> sometimes. <so. laughs> Mike, while you eat a salt. We'll find out next week. Unless Mike tries to kickflip that gap and then gets caught in the gap for three weeks, you know? Yeah, yeah just like stuck <laughs> yeah. between time and that space. That so like, great. <laughs> yeah, he, he's got to contemplate cutting off his uh, shoes with a pocket knife. Oh, my goodness. Like 128 hours. Yes, yeah, um, right below him is some taquitos grilling, and he's like, I don't know. Oh, that'd be good for a while. Do you know that taquitos grow in nature, Mike? You just have to find the right. Yeah, ones. they grow in your backyard, officer. I know I was growing taquitos. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, sir. Uh, Gandhi's politically fueled hunger strikes were never the solution to a political change from the get-go. He kind of rode the wave of like some already mounting political pressure. And then, like, the political change happened. So, all the changes that came about weren't directly and solely from his hunger strikes. It's kind of like if, like, on January 19th, when George Bush was still in office, I was like, I'm not going to eat until there's a new president. And then, you know, next day Obama's elected. Well, thank God you can eat that taquito. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, it, right. it's not. he kind of rode the political waves. Like, yes, he went hungry for a while, but it was never like that long only, enough. It was never that long, and it was never Gandhi's hunger strike doing the entire heavy lifting of facilitating that change. Mm. You know what I mean? He was just like, ah, uh, this tr this change is already happening. Let me jump on it with a hunger strike, and then it was like, oh, I did it. So, it like, nah, so well, he's basically whatever. the AFI of like pop punk in the early 2000s. Sure, whatever that. They're thing. just riding the wave. I don't know anything about pop punk because I'm so hard. Yeah, I know. You got spaghetti all over your shirt. So hard. So hard. <laughs> You'd think for some guy that doesn't eat too much, Gandhi would uh, stay still and just kind of couch lounge. But no, Gandhi was a motherfucker that just loved to fucking power walk everywhere. And when I say power walk, I mean a slow, slow and steady power walk. Oh, not like those moms of the track? No, not the, okay. not, the, not the moms wearing the Slav suits. Okay. Mm. Um... And because of his asceticism belief, he wouldn't ever get a car, a Vespa, or rollerblades. Like, India is a big ass place. He's an important guy. He's got to make appointments everywhere. But he's just gonna motor it in the thinnest sandals he can find, just because that's his lifestyle. Oh, that sounds like great! It sucks. Yeah, that that yeah. sounds somewhat intrusive in a way. If you're trying yeah. to make schedules with someone, hey, uh, you know, I'd love if you came in this afternoon. That sounds great. I'll be there in three weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the, all Gandhi did. Wait, uh, you, you specifically said rollerblades? Was that a thing? No. Okay, I just was key. imagining like Jet Set uh, Radio, but in India. No. Yeah, me That'd too. Be cool. <laughs> bing -a -bong -a -bong -a -bong -a -bong. Jet Set Radio. <laughs> <laughs> so roughly, Gandhi walked 49,000 miles throughout his lifetime. In terms Damn. of In terms of equators, that's two. I've walked that hundreds of times. I went to an American public school. <laughs> oh. I understand what it's like to walk so far to get anywhere yeah. that doesn't mean anything. It's... <laughs> he could have walked around the earth twice, and that's not impressive to you? No, I'm not impressed. I, I, <laughs> I've, walked to, I've walked to Mars. And, and at the end of Mars has been disappointment every time. Dude, walked it, all the, the way at, back. On the, yeah. on, the, on the I hear that on the other side of Mars, on the dark side of Mars, is just a dick pic from Elon Musk. Yeah, <laughs> we would never know. Yeah, a small no, little well, dick it's there. Pic. Yeah, we can go find out now, but we have to pay him to get there. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> ah, capitalism. <laughs> we can pay him oh. or his baby Xeon Flux AX two five seven. What is it? X Ash twelve eight? No, uh, X Ash A twelve. I don't know. He didn't even wait for the diagnosis. He just made an autistic kid. <laughs> Getting ahead of this one. <laughs> so while Gandhi was doing up the whole political activism for the sake of India, 1942, he starts the Quit India movement. That's pretty much given his big old middle. He must have had a long middle finger. I just see Gandhi with a really long middle finger. He gives his long brown middle finger to Imperial Britain. And he's just like, fuck you. Get out of my country. India's for Indians. Dude, why was it so easy for a bunch of racists in fucking Britain to just leave something? 
Brexit, right? And then he's got these Indians the that are like... They're fucking quitters. Yeah, and he got these Indians that are like, we can't eat the salt that grows out of the ground, and we need to starve ourselves. And this guy hasn't eaten sausage roll in three weeks. <laughs> we can't trust him. He's got the people's confidence he's not eating his sausage roll. <laughs> yes. As I said, 1942, and uh, Gandhi goes to Britain. He's like, can you get the fuck out? And Britain's like, this is a really, really bad time to have this discussion. The Luftwaffe are just pissing bombs on all of our fucking cities. Uh, this is a really bad time, Gandhi. Uh, can you come back later? I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do for you, Gandhi. Um, I'll throw you in jail more <laughs> and then divide up your country because of mounting Muslim uh, political pressure. And Gandhi's just like, fuck. <laughs> Right, that's so he was thrown in jail for sedition, and sure enough, uh, the Muslims wanted their own piece of uh, backyard of India. That was right when that was right when Britain was like, I don't know, we, uh, we have all these ships and tanks, and they run off this black water, and the Muslims yes. have black water. We must be nice what to them. We do? <laughs> yeah, there uh, you go. Okay, so I like you can have doing. you, you sir, can have India. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, Britain's got that whole shit going on. They got they're getting bombed. Winston Churchill's like, I just did figuring it out. Um, and then uh, they're like, whatever. You got another oppressor coming in. Take that one. Yeah, yeah. there you go. We're we're no. tired of this shit anyway. We, we can only sell you. Uh, we can't even sell you bed sheets anymore because you've decided to learn how to make them. <laughs> you you bastard, <laughs> learning how to make your own goods. How dare you! Yeah, right? So, if you haven't guessed it, a uh, little bit of a global conflict going on right now. World War II. Uh, in the 1940s, via open letter, Gandhi addresses the whole of the British nation and offers up this nugget of military strategy to uh, the Limeys. I would like you to lay down the arms you have as being useless for saving you or humanity. You will invite <laughs> Air Hitler and Signor Mussolini to take what they want of your country's you call your possessions. If these gentlemen's, if these gentlemen choose to occupy your homes, you will vacate them. If they do not give you free passage out, you will allow yourselves, man, woman, and child, to be slaughtered. But you will refuse to owe allegiance to them. So Gandhi was wow. a Nazi. Gandhi, a little bit of a Nazi, but definitely a puss. Dude, he's no, like, he's if, like, dude, if Hitler rolls through, don't worry, they're Aryan. He's like us. Uh, so look, Yeah, definitely. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't he's like us. Way. He's Indian. Aryan comes from the Himalayas. So fuck you, British idiots. Yeah, yeah. dude, just take a relax, guy. And if you notice the wording here, he's just he's talking to the Brits like they're Brits. But it it's not Hitler. It's Air Hitler. Like, oh, friendly Hitler. And Signor Mussolini, like Mr. Mussolini. Right. So he's kind of like rogering up and sucking a little bit of fascist chode right now. Pardon the terminology. Well, well that's what I was saying. The Nazis had a boner for Indian, especially like northern India, because that's where they thought the Aryan they race fell out of the came from. from. Yeah, and there okay. was a I lot of it. there was a lot of people and I don't know the extent really? I don't know the extent of with Gandhi, but there was a lot of people in India, part of this movement of liberating India, that aligned themselves to the Nazis because the Nazis were like, "Yeah, sure, you're you're way better than the British. You're a master race. Like, yeah. you know, like you should have your own country." The Nazis felt the same way about the Japanese. Right? He's like, "Oh, Japanese. Oh, you're way better than Chinese people Selective for whatever racism. reason. Arbitrary shit." Like, yeah, you're better. I don't know why. Samurai. I love anime. I'm Hitler. Yaoi. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, Hitler like, had a waifu because cause Ava Braun did not put out. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was just an idiot. <laughs> like, him and his buddies were just an idiot that just arbitrarily made some countries more pure than other countries. And one of those countries was India over the British. Well, it's the same way, like, you know, today, like, a modern-day Nazi is still going to go on the internet, watch porn like everyone else, and watch Lexington Steel perform and go, oh, he's one of the good ones, he's one of the good ones, he's on our team, he's doing it for us. Man, my dick is just the same size as my his, favorite. right? Oh, yeah, I can totally relate. It's 
easy for me to imagine myself there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, feel really wow. good about yourself, the Nazis. Goals uh, I have, you know? You got small penises. Mm. So, he's kind of inviting the British to just have the Nazis do as they will, even if it means slaughtering them, man, woman, and child. Right. Uh, a little bit after the fucking smoke of World War II clears, uh, our genius tactician ponti pontificated after uh, the Holocaust, quote, Hitler killed five million Jews. It is the greatest crime of our time, but the Jews should have offered themselves to the butcher's knife. They should have thrown wow. themselves into the sea from the cliffs. It would have aroused the world and the people of Germany. As it is, they succumbed already. So he's saying, like, well, if Hitler's going to kill, if, the, if five million Jews are going to end up dead, you should do it in a grandiose political statement. Kill yourselves before they show up. That way the world sees how mean Hitler was going to be. But, like, it's a hindsight 2020 thing. It's just like, well, they don't. So he's just like, hey, Jews, guess what? Uh, Hitler, Hitler was like, uh, you guys suck. Go drink bleach. Yeah, yeah it'd be a lot cool if you were dead. Go hit the Tide Pods. Go eat some yeah. Tide Pods. So he was like, ah, Hitler can't gas you if you drown yourselves before he gets to you. And just like, oh, great. Thanks, Gandhi. A little, little too pacifist in the preaching there. Yeah. So Gandhi labeled this hypothetical act of suicide amongst the five million Jews as a heroic collective suicide. So it's like, oh, you, you need to keep that to yourself. Dude, that's fucked. That's really fucked. Like, I didn't so, know that he would say something that fucked. Yeah. It's very Right, bad. like, why don't yeah. they teach this shit in school? This is what I'm so it, pissed off about our education system. Well, because our, our, our school system is based on Disney products. It's yeah. It's not based on reality. It's based on how we want kids to feel uh, patriotic and, and like the races that we like. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, in most Disney movies, the actual stories end tragically because they're legitimate stories. That and yes. life is not fair, and people die, and like if you're a hunchback, you'll go burn in a fucking cathedral. That that's actually how that story ends. Yeah, yeah. and it's like they teach this fucking fluffy shit in school, where it's like Gandhi, oh, he was so good, he didn't even eat any food. And guess what? Yeah, that's what I learned about him. Indians, yep. Indians, they have just as good food as Chinese people. You should try out our local Chi Indian place. Well, what do you say? They're not <laughs> as good as Italians, still. <laughs> The two of yeah, them well, together right. <laughs> still ain't got yeah, pizza. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on, guy. <laughs> come on, boss. Because it's trickier to teach the bad side. Yeah, exactly. We're not the only yeah. podcast that do, do, does this kind of shit where you just talk about history for what it is, and then we have fun while we're doing like, it. We're, we are the funniest podcast that does this, that's for yeah. fucking sure. There's no f other funny podcast I can think of that does history like we do. I mean, Tom is pretty much the Joe Exotic, and I'm the most majestic tiger. Cody's like one of the chimpanzees he abused, and Mike is like one of the redneck meth heads. That's his that's how you mean. I don't know. You're a skateboarder, exactly dude. Said. You can do a nolly ollie. I mean, I can't even pronounce the things you say. So that makes me a racist. I didn't say anything about being racist. They're different. You're racist against rednecks, Mike. Fuck you. Did we lose Mike now? Did he hang up? <laughs> I'm back. Let's do a very quick rewind and bring it back to India, shall we? Yeah. Sure. So, uh, Indian Hindus and Indian Muslims were more or less pretty cool with each other. They're like, yeah, you are. You are. You're mm -hmm. good. We, we both do the head wrap things for different reasons. But we're, we're, gotcha. We're cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, we have British politics shoving their dick into the chili pot and stirring everything up. All That's right. a callback to our Mother Teresa episode. Uh, oh, yeah, dude. I love dick in the chili dick pot. And chili. Yeah. So this is the same British chili dick stirring as that episode, just through the eyes of Gandhi uh, this time. So okay. in the early 1930s, the Muslim League surfaces in India, and they're looking out for Muslim Indians. Around the 1940s, they want a <laughs> local, sovereign Muslim nation. They were worried that once the Brits pulled their dick out of the chili pot, the Hindus would shove their dick in the freshly formed dick-shaped cavity. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, as soon as the Brits leave, the Hindus are going to come in and start bullying us. So they wanted to call... They wanted to get a new Muslim territory, and they wanted to call this place Pakistan, a.k.a. the land of the pure. Is that what that means? Yes, Pakistan means land of the pure. 
Okay. Oh, wow. I did not know so, that. No. I, I, I learned that, that too. Yeah. Uh, Gandhi doesn't want this. Gandhi thinks Indians are his people. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're a Hindu Indian or a Muslim Indian. To Gandhi, he's just like, you're all my people. I'm going to bat for you. I'm sticking up for all Indians regardless of their fucking religion. Yeah, Gandhi doesn't give a shit about Hindu or Muslim. He is Hindu himself. He prefers himself to be Hindu, but he doesn't. he's not going to hate on a Muslim Indian over a Hindu Indian. They're all his quote-unquote flock, and he's the And shepherd. also, is he playing up the fact that he's part of, like, this untouchables or whatever yeah that's why he's doing the poor thing okay. you know what i mean it's like a solidarity he shed it. you gotta go either way he becomes untouchable so if he just stays an untouchable no one's gonna listen to him but if he goes to the most extreme version of untouchable if he becomes the vermin supreme then people <laughs> will listen to him yeah if he's if he he would be less profound a figure if he was the top of the caste system affecting all these changes. But he chose to get excommunicated, stay at the bottom or, you know, the sub-basement of the caste system and affect the changes there. To be like, look, I'm doing the everyman's work. I'm being an honest-to-goodness activist and <coughs> affecting political change. Uh, and that's why he was, you know, rocking the, you know, the dhoti and only the walking stick and glasses, not doing anything with suits. So... Your boy Gandhi doesn't want this divided India-Pakistan line. He's just like, ah, it should be a fucking united India. You know, undivided, strong, as it is. Uh, As I said earlier, he thought Indians were his peeps regardless of religion. And, you know, like, fuck fuck the small thing of being Hindu. Fuck the small thing of being a Muslim. You're from India. Let's be one. As long Uh, as you're not a black person that moved to India. Yeah, that'd be a whole (laughs) different... uh, can of worms the muslim political power is just like we want the divide and the hindu is just like yeah let's keep it there they're going back and forth diplomatic talks go pear-shaped and break down and in august 1946 direct action day ensues i talked a little bit about this during the mother Teresa episode but essentially it's a bloodbath for hindus and muslims alike it's a day of attacks counterattacks, and counter counter attacks a uh, bunch of shit in Calcutta is torched to the ground, and there's a bunch of mystery torsos laying in the gutter. Ooh. Uh, Calcutta has like, a different name, too, right? Yeah, it's Kolkata now, or I don't even know. Oh, okay. Correct. It's something else now. It's not. There's no Calcutta anymore, unfortunately. Right. And Gandhi's just there watching everything burn down like fucking Minneapolis, and he's just like, I fucking did not want this! He's all upset. He does his thing of stopping to eat again. It's a pretty good distressed again. Indian man voice you had. I tried. Yeah. yeah I tried. Got it. Not what there's. Uh, and he's all upset and stops eating again until the violence stops. So he's like, this sucks. I'm not going to eat. You guys are being violent twats, and I'm a nonviolent boy. Um, Do you think that you mentioned his wife is kind of out of the picture? Do you think he's gonna, she's getting dicked down by a bunch of black guys right now? I hope so. <sighs> I probably, hope so. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. I hope so, but probably not. <laughs> we can only hope so. So all this violence is going down, and Gandhi's like, let me try my peaceful tactics. And everyone's like, uh, sure. Uh, go ahead and try. So Gandhi, unarmed, as a Gandhi is, with a very small entourage, ventures out to the Muslim villages of the people that are burning shit down and, you know, making the mystery torsos in the gutter. Uh, fortunately for Gandhi, his humble, in good faith, and in-person appearance and pleas did not get him killed. Uh, they're like, all right, you came down in person and unarmed, so it's like, well, we're not going to kill you, but we're going to be very mean to you. We're going to be mean to you, Gandhi. That's rude. Uh, so rude. Yeah, it's rude. Mm. You want to you know how rude it was, Tom? Can I guess? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tom, so uh, he was Travis. sleeping, and a bunch of these British guys came into him and were like, shmite, shmite. And they sprinkled Legos all over his floor. <laughs> oh and then my when God. Gandhi got up, he's like, oh, I'm going to get myself a mango lassi. And he steps out of the bed. Ah! My sandals are too thin for this. <laughs> I don't know if we're joking or we actually knew the answer here. No, what's uh, the answer? <laughs> some of the more <laughs> passive aggressive fuckos would follow the thinly sandaled Gandhi around and break glass. <laughs> Along his path. <laughs> they just didn't invent Legos yet. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. And uh, they also uh, smeared a little uh, turd in his way too. So 
where he was walking, some passive aggressive Muslim just broke glass and just smeared fecal matter where Gandhi was going to walk, just like as a very passive aggressive trolling. Like, ha ha ha, look at you. You, 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 you have to walk on this. Now, let me Mike, ask you guys ponder this one. Maybe that shit came out of his fucking bed sheet skirt. And he was blaming it on someone else. Maybe he just took a little diarrhea dump and was just like, I can't believe someone would do this to me. Who did who did this? <laughs> who did that to me? Oh my god. Was that who shit is coming out of there? Who did yeah. that? Jim Morrison. I think maybe this ties back into Jack Ryan Radio India because you got to soap your rails up, right? Like Mike, you know about this. You can't just hit a oh, rail yeah, yeah. without wax. So no. Gandhi's I, shitting hey, on the rail. I do that. Hitting it with the sandals. Soaps. Yeah, loop it up. Yeah. A little bit. So, these assholes are breaking glass and throwing turds in Gandhi's way. As a virtuous fuck you, Gandhi removes his sandals and just has a nice good old poopy glass walk as oh. he finishes up his, like, please stop the violence tour. So he's oh, just like, right. you, think this will, you think this will irk me? Do you have any idea how callous my feet are? Fuck you. Takes off his sandals. And he does, you know, diehard's John McClane, but with added doo-doo. Imagine if instead of throwing that like hockey puck puck flashbang out in, in Die Hard, it was just like a a turd. A flaming bag. Yeah. Of turd. <laughs> like, haha, John McGrain, you do not have your shoes. I'm not a religious guy, but uh some historians liken this act of poopy glass hike to Jesus' crucifixion. Mm, to which I ah. respond to which I respond, fuck nah. Uh, it's not the same thing. Yeah. No. Uh, I'm not a religious either, either but uh, guess what? Uh, having a crown of thorns on your uh -huh. head and, and carrying the thing that's going to execute uh -huh. you uh -huh. on your back is a little bit different than, oh, guess what? There's poopy. This glassy poop. It's just a little human similar. excrement. We could all walk past that. We, he could have walked around it, too. Yeah. Yeah. He could have done a fakie, walked around it. Yeah. yeah. Just stomped in it. Yeah, that's what mush it mush it up. Yeah, the poop Real could have protest. acted as a sandal once it dried. Embrace they it. could have stomped on the poop, put it towards the Indian this sun, is, which is, is very ridiculous. hot. I've heard. There you go. I'll make a yeah. sun patty. Yeah. Any which way you want to look at it, crucifixion is much worse than uh, poopy glass. Yes. Yeah. So the Muslim on Hindu and vice versa violence would eventually stop, but the Indian Pakistani divide was inevitable. The borders were drawn, Hindus in the newly designated Pakistan and Muslims in the newly redesignated India had to get the fuck out mm. because it's they're not where they quote unquote belong. And at this point, like the fucking difference is way technical. You know what I mean? Like some bureaucrat just like drew an imaginary line and said, this is that, this is that. Get to where you belong and caused horrible traffic jams. My yeah. God. They're really uh, fucked up adding borders in the Middle yeah. East. Uh, worst traffic jams ever. It was a field day for uh, armed highwaymen. Think about it. Just entire families carrying only their, their most only their most valuable possessions just lost in the countryside. So highway uh, uh, fucking bandits made out like bandits that day. Right. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna be like, hey, this is your Angela White DVD collection that you've brought along because <laughs> it's one of the most Valuable possessions you it's own. It's mine now. It's mine. It's mine. Leave it's the mine. one with Johnny Sins, please. It's I need mine. that one. Dude, Johnny Sins, they left at home because he's just an average dude. He's banged too much. That's good. He's at least not you have mine. that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. And this is what precipitated some of those archival footed, uh, photos and footage that you see of like all those Indians like riding on top of the trains and hanging their butts out of the windows. But they still do that anyway. Try to not be racist there, but here no, comes I'm not, Travis. No, I'm not. I'm not being. Ra I'm not even really trying to be racist. Like people pile on trains yes, in India. Yes, they hey, do. Uh, like Mike, and I almost Mike and, and I almost Cody, uh, Mike and Cody. Have you guys noticed how racist <laughs> Travis has been this? <laughs> no, episode? weird, right? I feel like Very if there weird. wasn't a tunnel to get into Manhattan, I think I might want a new nutritionist. As someone that commuted to to the city from Long Island <laughs> for a few years. If there wasn't a tunnel, there'd be fucking Long Islanders on the Long Island Railroad on the oh, roof. Oh, thanks for the ni nice cover-up, man. Yeah, definitely a lot of uh, people go from Long <laughs> Island on a on a on the top of a train into Manhattan to go um, milk goat semen, and 
<laughs> and take somehow more cows. racist than what Travis said. Oh, that's what he's implying. No, I wish I could be on the roof. I could have smoked cigarettes. I wouldn't have had to deal with fucking all these oh. stockbrokers sweaty fucking pits in my fucking oh, yeah. ears oh. and eyes. Hey, those stockbrokers thought the same thing about your pits. Fuck the stockbrokers. They can yeah. go I'd love suck to pee my off the side of a moving train. They can go suck my big old stockbroker dick. Excellent. All right, Cody, continue. <laughs> All right. So, just so you know, things are not good in India uh, for a bunch of reasons. But as a levity break, we're going to go a little bit over his late life hijinks right now. Keep in mind, he's like in his 70s right now. Great. Entire lifetime of trying to liberate uh, India from British rule. Kind of gets it, you know, but it's not exactly what he wants because of partition day and all that but just want you to know before you move on to some of the heavier stuff mike did you know gandhi was into butt stuff oh really yeah when he got older in his uh senior citizen days he really really liked butt stuff not necessarily anal sex but uh he was a butt boy he liked butts oh um he was kind of oh. like the, that one old, the old stinker guy. yeah um, he was kind of like that one old uh, guy in the YMCA locker room that's way too comfortable talking about, you know, anatomy. <laughs> you know the guy, right? Um, he'd uh, ask his followers, uh, like, mostly only the women for some reason. He's like, hey, how was your uh, morning movement? And uh, if these ladies said anything other than excellent Mahatma, he'd uh, offer to enema them. He's like, oh, let me oh, let me get up nice. there and unclog you. <laughs> yeah, generous, very oh, generous. Dick. It was only, like, the women for some reason. I don't know what was going on with that, Gandhi. But he'd be like, oh, let me help you. Let me unclog you really quickly. Oh, you know, I a got real this great thing. Like, or, like, with his dick? A, re a real enema. He he'd be like, oh. let me help. Because, like, he, he backed it up with, like, some yoga bullshit. It's just like, oh, it's very important for the body to be uh, free in its movement of uh, stuff. So he's so like, let me unclog, let me shove this enema up you, clean you out, and uh, be those good, are good. And, and your spiritual energy will return to you. So we've all seen it on the internet. Have we? On the glorious internet. You know, uh, milk enemas. He'd probably be looking up milk enemas. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mango lossy enemas, Travis? Yeah, mango lossy enema. Uh, Tom, mm, you look disgusted. Yeah, I know. I am. I'm just kind of soaking in it. <laughs> I, I, need to, I need to collect my thoughts. So wake you So. Your boy Gandhi, way too into enemas, especially female enemas. Fucking weird. Uh, speaking of bodily fluids, haha. Uh, he thought a man's spiritual strength came from a self inflicted case of blue balls. He's like, don't come. It'll make you weaker. So, like, this is kind Crab of why he's on his celibacy thing, but he thought um, he who maintained his vital fluids would attain an undeniable power. So, it's just like, I'll be. Really strong if I don't come a bunch. You know, we still haven't been able to prove that as men because we need to come. Yeah, yeah, I'm weak as fuck right yeah. now. I'm weak as fuck right now. Let me just tell you that. I have, yeah, I've never been weaker. I'm so weak. I've never actually been strong. strong. I've never been strong. Yeah. <laughs> never been strong. I'm so I, weak right I now. I was maybe strong when I was about 13 years old. Uh, yeah, I'm younger. I haven't been strong since I, I was, was very 10, strong man. then. Yeah, 10. <laughs> yeah. Stronger than I am now. Yeah, so he, he uh for a better man. He, he liked to uh he liked to prove he was the better man. And uh he'd like to set up uh these little temptation exercises with himself. He would approach his uh, female followers and be like, "Hey, let's let's sleep together naked. I won't touch you. You and I should sleep together naked." Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so he would l set up these temptation exercises and be like, "Look, no." Yeah, you see how hard I didn't have sex with you last night? I'm a strong that man. That's weird. Yeah. Come have sex with me <laughs> oh. now. Let's get naked and under the seat, but let's not have yeah. sex. Is That's his wife date. still alive? Is he like, hey, guess what? Don't worry, lady. I'm going to go test how strong I am right now. Uh, I don't think his wife is, is alive. His wife died of pneumonia because she was emaciated from one of the hunger strikes. She was taking a long Gandhi. Uh, she didn't make, she didn't survive one of them, essentially. Uh, so Gandhi killed her. Gandhi killed his wife. There you go. Very good. Oh, okay. okay. That's cool. Well, he's yeah. a murderer now, and he uh, probably comes after they leave. Uh, 
awkward thing is one of those <laughs> women was his grandniece, Manu. So he Ew. approaches his grandniece and is just like, hey, how about you tempt me and I not do it? And this is an extra Ew. weird part because it's just like, all right, we, you didn't do it, but why did you label sex with your grandniece as a temptation? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's this whole confusing thing of, I don't know if you like it or not. It's easy dude. to say no. You guys are yeah, going to be so proud of me about the way I do not have sex with these kids. <laughs> <laughs> He's you can kind it of up. call Gandhi an incestuous fuck because he's labeling sex with his grandniece as a temptation. Right. He didn't he never did it, but at the same time he's just like tempt me, tempt me with incestuous You'd want relations. To. She looks so much like me. Very, very good. Yeah. Very, very good. Now you're that's racist to say very, very good like that. You can't <laughs> nah, say that. You can you can you can say it. You can tell a story. <laughs> Wait, not, I can't say a story. You want not, I'm just don't, don't tell a story. The, just don't uh, say very, very good. Very, very good. <laughs> He's not crossing the Gandhi line. All right. Yes. That's the important thing. Gandhi was much more of a racist. Right. So he's doing weird butt stuff and giving himself major blue balls with his grandniece, and it's really awkward. And it's, we don't even know if you, like, it, it's such a weird thing to do. Because, like, at the end of the day, you don't know if he likes uh, grandniece sex. Because, like, if you put a bowl of pierogies in front of me, and I'm just like, watch how hard I don't take it. And after a day of not taking it, you're kind of confused if I like pierogies or not, because I, I'm using it as I'm admitting it's a temptation, but I'm not taking it. Right. So well, it's just also, like, what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. Also, let's be honest, guys. I mean, you know your body more than I think most women do. So he does the enema for his niece. I don't yeah. know Gotta that get that happened. poop out. Gotta, Gotta get, get the poop, poop out. out. Gotta get the poop out. Then he goes to sleep next to her naked, beats one out. That's gross. Yeah. Right? Nah. He's, I he's like guess maybe he did. There's no fucking documentation on it. Otherwise, I would Yeah, but there's not going to the be. Though. They're not going to be like, oh, Gandhi jerked off next to his niece. They're like, I don't know. Gandhi was like, woke up and was like, all right, I didn't have sex with her. Okay. Uh, he's a goddamn hero. For not <laughs> banging his grandniece. Yeah, that that's all right. So he's a pedophile. I don't care. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm throwing him. Yeah. It's like you're admitting you're admitting uh, right, yeah. underage sex up. with your He's a gross pedophile. Let's a move on. Let's find out what else is wrong so that's with why this I was, fucking that's idiot. That's why I was saying you're 30 That's why I was saying you're 33% right earlier, Tom. Right. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. So, animas and blue balls aside, uh baby Pakistan is still a fucking problem for India. So, we're coming back to serious times. Uh, India and Pakistan, each side is leading uh, armed raids across the borders, intruding into territories and, you know, killing the shit out of each other. Uh, Gandhi, meanwhile, is going through the fine print of the Pakistan-India division and found a stipulation that was not yet honored. Uh, the fine print stated that uh, a British treasury uh, should relinquish a small fortune of 550 million rupees to Pakistan. And Gandhi's like, you know, being a nerd going through the fine print. It's like, oh, wait, you didn't do this one. Fuck you guys. Fuck Britain. And, lawyer. Uh, lawyer. Very good. A lot of money. I don't know if it is. <laughs> I honestly don't know American uh, USD to fucking... Uh, Ruples? Rupees. Oh, rupees. And, uh, Ruples are Russian. Rupees and... Yeah, Ruples. I'm, you might be right. 55 yeah. million Indian dollars. There we go. <laughs> Fifty-five million uh, Zelda coins. No, no, coins. 550 million Zelda gems. Right. Yeah. A lot of Zelda gems. <laughs> that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of scratch. Yeah. Uh, Gandhi wanted this bullet point to be honored, so he he did his Gandhi thing and did the honor uh, hunger strike for it. Rather, uh, this pissed off a bunch of Indians. Believe it or not. From their perspective, uh, the so-called Indian poster boy just went on a hunger strike to help fund the Pakistani uh, armed raids that were intruding into Indian territory. So you kind of see why like this socio-political clusterfuck is already dangerous. Because the people that used to be called Indians are now Pakistans, they're being mean, and Gandhi doesn't see any distinction between Indians and Pakistans and is going to the bat for Pakistans, for the Pakistani people. Which pisses off the Indians. So it's like right. a whole fucking clusterfuck. But, you know, TLDR, Gandhi does something and it actually pisses off Indian nationalists. That's the main takeaway. 
during this whole thing, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, did you come across a guy that was like working in tandem with Gandhi who is way more political and way more activist than Gandhi? Because I remember hearing something that there was another dude who was like Gandhi's like PR guy kind of. Uh, and he was like, he yeah, was like the guy who was actually like running the activism and Gandhi was like, I don't know. I'm not going to eat. And like this dude's yeah, like, Gandhi was know, a little we... hands off because he didn't want to like take sides per se, but like I, the fucking name is. Yeah. Cause I know, I know was... the Muslim, the Muslim side guy name was Jinnah. Okay. And the Indian guy side started with an N. I can't yeah, there was right a now. definitely another guy that was like, all right, he's a politician, like he knows how to like deal with shit, and Gandhi's just like the stunt man. <laughs> he's a poster boy, yeah. He's a yeah, David Blaine. Right? You put him in a fish tank he's... for nine days, put him in Times Square, yeah. everyone's gonna think he's God. Oh, he thinks yeah. he's magic. Yeah, he's magic. Fantastic. Um, anyway, uh this hunger strike for Pakistani uh for the Pakistani peeps pisses off uh Indian nationalists. Let's talk. Assassination attempts. Yay! What? Uh, January 20th, 1948, an Indian nationalist named Gopal Godsi uh, borrowed no in... There. <laughs> nope, Godsi. <laughs> uh, yeah. He borrowed an automatic pistol and approached the estate where Gandhi was conducting a prayer meeting. So Gandhi is in a courtyard. He's doing a prayer meeting. He's, you know, saying all his uh, Gandhi things. Uh, the... At this location, there's security and hired staff all over the place. It was a closed-off but open-air courtyard. Gandhi's in the back of the courtyard at a podium leading the prayers. Uh, there's a front entrance, a back entrance, and a window into the courtyard. All right, you're setting up an Assassin's Creed mission for me. Yep, think of it as like that. It's just like <laughs> Splinter Cell or Assassin's Creed. So, courtyard, front entrance, back exit, window. Gandhi's a little bit towards the back because that's where, you know... The or orator, you know, resides when he's talking to a bunch of people. So Gopal, he's like, I got this in the bag. Let me just, you know, wait for the coast to clear. All the security personnel will get leave. I'll run up to that window, shoot Gandhi in the head. And then when the shit hits the fan, panic ensues. I'll make a break for it. Easy peasy, in and out, five star mission. You Anyone I mean? can do that. Anyone can yeah. do that, except our boy Gopal. Oh, great. Because <laughs> <laughs> as Gopal... As it turns out, uh, Gopal was a fucking small fry and couldn't actually reach the fucking window. Oh, it's too small? <laughs> it's too small. Oh, got me. Uh, yeah, Gopal even admitted he couldn't reach the pistol that high enough to, like, start blind firing in Gandhi's general direction. Damn, what and a lucky he, bastard. He's looking, he's looking around. There's there ain't shit to stand on. And after 30 seconds, he comes out and he's like, I, I can't do it. Shit's too high up. <laughs> Dude, India would have been totally different if there was Home Depots because he could just yeah, go right. to a fucking get a stepladder. Get a stepladder. Go get a chair. Or a DSW. He can go get some heels. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> some uh, or he could have just grabbed a macaque and fucking rode the monkey up to the window. Yeah. I was thinking, give the monkey the gun and throw it over the window. Yeah. Train a monkey to shoot him. You said that in all earnesty. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so Gopal's a small fry, and he, he comes back out after, literally, he said he tried for 30 seconds, trying to, like, jump up and see if he could look over the window. Oh, he's he was lazy. Yeah, he comes out to his co-conspirators, and we're like, shit's too high. Couldn't do it, man. I couldn't kill Gandhi, because shit's too high. You're yeah, just there's, a, like a six, there, there's like a 6'5 there's like a guy who's like, oh, I don't, I don't know what to do. As a result, one of the taller <laughs> co-conspirators... Co-conspirators, co-conspirators, fuck, named Madonlal was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, you give me that pistol right now, you small fry. And Madonlal takes the pistol, goes to the window, and is like, shit, that is way up there. I can't reach that either. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one fucking like cased this joint before no, this. No, no. Oh my god, it's one of the funnier things. Like if they just brought a step ladder, they could have fucking done it. So instead. Madan Lal uses his brain and he finds the chauffeur who's on standby. Like, you know, he's taking a break. He's waiting to, like, drive people around once the prayer session is done. And he approaches the chauffeur and identifies himself as a paparazzo. Mm. He's like, hey, my assignment is to get a 
photo, a candid of Gandhi. Uh, I'm going to get fired if this doesn't happen. Uh, here's a bunch of money. Wink, wink. Grease the palms. Here's a bribe. Take me to the back door. Let me snap a photo of Gandhi. I won't interrupt the prayer session. I won't. I won't even go into the courtyard. I'll just crack the door. Little snapshot. I'll be on my way. Here's here's a considerable bribe. And it turns out this chauffeur is the smartest dumbass I've encountered in recent roast mortem history. The chauffeur is just like, oh sure, I'll do that for you. But wait a minute, that candid photo would be nearly worthless as it would be from Gandhi's back at like 20 meters away. And you don't even have a camera on you, chief. <laughs> <laughs> and the cell phone. That's called a gun. Yeah. <laughs> and Madonna was just like, fuck, I must have left that thing you just said in the taxi I came here on. Please excuse me without following me. And he fucking leaves. <laughs> and the chauffeur is like, okay, bye. So, Would someone just kill Gandhi already? God damn it. <laughs> Madan Lal goes and gets a homemade bomb he's concocted, a shitty one, and he finds a quiet corner, Gandhi's on the other side of the wall, and he sets up this homemade bomb. However, the homemade bomb was made out of mostly gun cotton. And What's gun cotton? Gun cotton is the thing... If you got a musket or some kind of firearm, you shove it into the barrel, and it's the thing that go, like lights before the gunpowder, and it goes foof. It's essentially just fluffy cotton that's treated with a chemical. So, okay. as you can imagine, this wasn't... Go ahead. No, it just doesn't have much blasting power, is what you're saying. Yes, very good. So, this bomb yeah. wasn't really a kapow. It was a push <laughs> kind of bomb. <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you if you threw a match on a bunch of so, Target clothes. Like, yes, it's flammable, but <laughs> there you go. You know, yes. If you're if you're not wearing it, you're not going to get damaged. Yes. If this bomb was meant to assassinate Gandhi's eyebrows, would have worked perfectly. <laughs> would have taken them right <laughs> off of his seventy year old face. But it didn't even, no injury, it went off, no injuries, no structural damage. However, it did immediately alert the authorities an assassination plot was happening. And Madonna, Madonna and Gopal like fucking flew the coop. Everyone, there's a panic. The cops fucking wrestle them down. They both get arrested and get life in prison. All right, so mission failed. Mission failed. However, 10 days later... Uh, Gopal's brother would finish the job. So, really quickly, ask me how Gandhi died. How did Gopal's brother get an S ranking in Kill Gandhi? Mm, very, the video <laughs> very <laughs> mission kill the fucking Gandhi. Uh, January 30th, well, excuse me, January 30th, 1948, literally 10 days later from Gopal and Madan Lal's attempt, Nathuram Godsi finishes the job. As Gandhi was leaving a, a similar prayer session, Nathuram waited inconspicuously at the exit for Gandhi to leave, which is pretty much what the other two fucking guys should have done if they wanted an S rank. Absolutely. Nathuram <laughs> approached Gandhi, bowed politely, and triple capped Gandhi point blank. Where did he shoot him in? His dick? Uh, the chest. The chest. Because uh. a, lot of, a lot of Gandhi uh, supporters are like, oh, it looks like a garland of bullets that the assassin put on Gandhi, which is, you know, super symbolic, but it's just, you know, three holes that kind of look like the man's nipples now. Don't we still have his bloody-ass jean sweatshirt that he was yeah, wearing? Yeah, his, his Oshkosh Bagash overalls, yes, we still yeah. have. Yeah, there's there's a whole museum on the site of where Gandhi uh, was killed that has his bloody dhoti and shawl and uh, specks. So, Gandhi died nearly instantly. Nathuram was arrested and hanged. Uh, but at his trial, there's a few other co-conspirators. Co-conspirators. I don't know why I'm having such trouble with those words. There's a few guys there, and um, I have a picture of them. And it looks like these guys just got back from, like, the greatest bachelor party of all time. Amazing. You know what I mean? Like, take, take a look at their faces. They're just like, oh, yeah. We totally... <laughs> It looks like they just yeah. high fived. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, John Lennon yeah, back. Way to go, guys! 
You mean these party fucks are the guys who killed Gandhi? Yep, those are the guys that killed Gandhi. <laughs> As like, great job, guys. You really killed that 78-year-old bag of bones. Like, are the guys in the back, are they wearing hats? Or is that one of those like 80s square-cut fro things? Flat top, Travis, you mean? Those are yeah, hats. high top. Flat tops. Flat yeah. top. So those, those look like hats. But like these guys, are they, their expressions are just like, yeah, we totally killed that one guy. That 78-year-old bag of bones pacifist that wouldn't have ever put up a fight if you uh, <laughs> we came got at him. him. We, we got totally him, boys. Got him. Mission accomplished. Yeah. So, as I said, Nathurum Gotzi was hanged. Gopal Madan Lal were sentenced to life. Where they're very um, open about their attempts. That's how we know a lot about the failed attempt. Because Gopal was just like, I couldn't do it. Shit was too high. It's a fucking high window. Did I miss this, but why did they try to kill him? Because, I said it earlier, uh, Gandhi went to bat with a hunger strike for the Pakistani for people. For the Pakistanis, okay. okay. And Gopal and the So Thurum, these, like, Hindu nationalists. Hindu nationalists didn't like Gandhi taking a hunger strike that would have benefited okay. the country that was leading active raids on Indian territory. Okay. Uh, it's a so whole these are the skinheads of India. It's a whole fucking mess. Super nice guys. Um... Just making no. sure shit gets done. Not tall guys, that's for sure. Nope. <laughs> not tall guys at all. Uh, Gandhi had a killer funeral. They were, they dragged him through, not dragged him, they put him on a stretcher <laughs> through the streets. Everyone's like, you know, hitting the dead guy in the face with flowers. You were a good guy. They take him uh, to his uh, funeral pyre. Uh, sa all sandalwood. Not cheap stuff. Uh, Gandhi's cremation no must have... No balsa for fucking Gandhi. Gandhi's cremation must have smelled nice because, of, and you know, the rest is fucking history. Well, and then they dump him in the Ganges, right? They're yeah, just like yeah. Throw I think that they pyre. Cruise. They just like shove it into the Ganges. Yeah. They're like, we're good. And then kids like five miles down the Ganges just take a bath in it, like with like Ganges yeah. like burnt bones. Of course, yeah. man. You got to wash away your sins and have a little of that <laughs> extra stink of a of a modern day saint slash pedophile and dirty bubble <laughs> man. Yeah, man. Mohandas Karamchad Gandhi, vegetarian racist lawyer, enema blue balls ad advocate, uh, also twisted dog ears. Don't forget him. Forget that shit. I, I always forgive the kid shit because I did dumb shit when I was a kid. But, uh, you know, it's yeah, important just to don't talk end up about it. You just don't end up as a subject on a roast morning episode is all. Dude, yeah. uh, you're damn he, right, damn right. Gandhi fought for conditional racial equality while openly dehuma dehuman while openly dehuman Fuck me. While openly dehumanizing Africans, uh, he literally told the Jews to go kill themselves. He survived <laughs> imperial cruelty and all of his assassination attempts, except for that one last one. I'm going to say it again. He was a fucking bucket of weird, this guy. Rest in Greece, Gandhi. Rest in Greece. Well, yeah, yeah. Doc. Yes. Rest in Greece. Thank you very oh. much, Cody, for doing that research. Fucking bucket of weird. Yeah, that's, Cody, that's, thank I'm you. standing by it. He's a weird boy. I didn't know that he liked to, like, uh, put his finger up butts. Yeah, neither did I. I didn't know that. Definitely an enema nozzle. Yeah, but that's just an extension of your finger. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's true. you have Take just grossed out off many people. Your butt. <laughs> well, it's it's a good talk, you know? It's good good yeah. good to get to know your neighbor's anus, is the old yeah, saying. Yeah. Gandhi's like, let me, see it let me see your wife's anus wink at. Yeah. yeah. Let me see those logs. Watch how hard I don't <laughs> sleep with your daughter. I want to see what you've done. <laughs> okay. With that, I would like to try something new as we close out this episode. Sure. Mike, would you do the honors yeah. of closing out the episode? Don't fuck up. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys, to Roast Mortem Cast. You can find us at Roast Mortem Cast on Twitter. And if you'd like to donate to our Patreon, that would be very thoughtful. What's the Patreon URL? Yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash Roast Mortem Cast. There you go. Uh, hey! Mike at Off the Grid. Travis at On the Grid. Travis Legion. On which platforms? The Grid? Just the Grid? Uh, just the, yeah, grid. the Grid. Yeah, the, yeah, grid. the Grid. All right. I'm on Twitter at Cody McCann, C-D-Y, M-double-C-A-W-N. Thank you, Shane. Oh. Thank, Thank you, Shane. Shane. Thank Mike, you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. out. Uh, good episode, Cody. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, I'm glad we, Let's clap I'm glad we roasted this cue ball. It's a big boy.
Night, everyone. Thank you, Shane. And clap for us. And as they Danky say in Shane. India, thank you. Come again. <laughs> 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 we we waited till the end. Dang.